Ladies and gents, welcome, welcome. We are finally back with some Call of Duty uh, here in the Katana Gaming League. We're still in group stages, Pabs. We haven't missed everything. We have missed quite a bit, to be fair, uh, but we're casting them as and when we can. Uh, we've got the boys of Fear Ferox up against V7 Esports. But first of all, mate, how are you doing? Hey, I'm all right. I'm doing well. I can see that you've got yourself a new background, the bed and the, uh, the, the kind of surreal background. abstract posters have just been, <laughs> they've gone. I'm going to guess that you're in a different room. Yeah, yes, mate. We have moved gaff. We have moved gaff. But the whole computer setup's come with us. The most important part, screw the bed, screw the telly, screw the couch. The PC is first. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I need to do something with the wall, to be honest, because I have absolutely nothing in the uh, in the background. I might just put a shrine to Pablo in the background <laughs> and see, see how people react to that one, mate. But I'll that tell you with just my head above the maze. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it printed as a display and just smack it on the wall. <laughs> Everyone will be like, "What the? What is going on?" <laughs> It's good to be uh, back on the cast, though. We've had an absolutely stellar week. I mean, I haven't been able to keep up to date as much with the Katana League. Obviously, it's been challenges elite this week, and I guess there's two stories this week. Uh, how kind of Jekyll and Hyde Team War have been. They get absolutely destroyed by Fabroni and Co. 3-0 in a game where they just didn't turn up, and then they've done a couple of reverse sweeps to bring themselves back to 2-2. And then on the other side of the coin, five media clan have absolutely been stellar all week with Super but just, I mean, he seems to be back to form. So probably the, the yeah. best time to do it as well with the pipeline for Heretics being so open at the minute. But yeah, it's nice to be back in the Katana League and be playing, you know, get casting over some kind of proper level kind of challenger level players or just those kind of players who are trying to get into the mix of uh, of that level. So looking forward to this this evening. Yeah, so we've got a, a mixed bag of, of names. Um well, a few recognisable pabs, obviously uh, B. Cole, um, one of the ICG lads from all the way back in Vanguard. I think yeah. we've cast Illusions, and I think we've cast Rice before as well. Foggy Season, a name that I definitely recognise from the uh, from the Blue Bird. But yeah, Fear Ferox going to consist of uh, Marzi, Matty, Cole, and Dino, and they are currently. I will quickly double check before I'm made to eat my words. They are doo -doo 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 -doo, scrolls furiously one and one at the moment. So um, this is their final game in the group V7, currently O and two. So they're very much the underdog team but they are literally rice and pickups i've been told um so illusions foggy and ibzino are going to be the guys that are uh, filling in for for those respective players but yeah we've uh, got a little bit of uh, an open an open blank canvas again pabs for us which we uh, we seem to be having quite a lot of at the moment <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah again it's difficult sometimes you know two years ago we were in the mix with everyone um, in terms of not just cast them but playing with a lot of the players so it was kind of easy to know everyone but obviously when you concentrate more solely on challenges you start to miss the players that are just tickling the underbelly of it so yeah. it's going to be nice to see these and we have seen obviously B. Cole before play un under ICG, ICG Takeover I believe that was with Dogs and a, a few other players that we, we kind of recognise as well um, Foggy I think I've seen in the Noctum chat a couple of times as well so big up him yeah. pick up teams it's a weird one because you just don't know the <laughs> caliber of player like if, if they've got you know if they're all vocal they've got decent comms there's no kind of um you know maestros in the team who just want to sit silent then you've got a, a good good chance of you know putting the team under pressure but right now Owen 2 doesn't look great for them and fear ferox have got yeah. to be confident that they're going to be able to take this game again we haven't quite got maps i think the lobby only just started up before oh, so we do my mate think, we do well i mean they tweaked the words beforehand <laughs> so oh wow a rio to begin with so i hope you've got your horse racing commentary ready mate <laughs> yeah nice. No, so rio map one double cratchy vista and high rise for this one so hopefully i'm hoping we do get to that map four because we do get to see one yeah. of the one of the new maps in, uh, what vista. are your thoughts on vista have you played it i have played it the, the first time i played it was in a game in ranked i got absolutely pummeled and the second time was in a free entry tournament and uh oh no sorry i lie that was six star i've only played vista in ranked i think twice maybe three times it's not a bad map i think after a little bit of reps and kind of understanding how the map plays out i think it will be a good map to be honest because obviously yeah. it came in at a time where it, the game this it's a weird time in the season to start changing maps because obviously teams are really looking to refine um their kind of qualities and maps as a as a team um, going into the later stages of the, of the tournaments and the game because uh, we are slowly getting towards the end of Modern Warfare 3 now which is crazy to say it feels as though we've, we've barely been going in this one but obviously brand new sets of maps coming in um, Six Star obviously comes in in Search and Control uh, Search and Destroy and Hardpoint as well so teams have got to get good at that map um, and Holy shit, Harry's just dropped 25 gifted <laughs> subs. Oh my god, the man from Elysian from the OG days. Thank you very much, Big H. Big Harry. 
Oh my god! I don't have the C button on my my. I still haven't put it back on. So, uh, mate, Harry, thank you so much, my man. Jesus, Damn. one of the OG boys. But speaking of kind of orgs like Elysian, obviously we spoke about kind of the lads, the lads like JMW who obviously used to play on that team. Pabs Hams as well um, as as being part of that organisation. We're so blessed with a lot of teams, um, owners and that, that put a lot into the community. Obviously, Harry literally demonstrating it from absolutely nowhere. A man who we've barely seen um, for, for feeling years dropping 25. Thank you very much, He mate. just gave me brother a sub. <laughs> Did he actually? <laughs> yeah. Okay, it just popped up. That's too funny. Oh, mate. And because we're on a 90 second delay, uh, I need to get in. I need to get in the love in the chat because we're run I'm running a, th a 90 second delay on the stream. Thank you, Harry, man. That's mental. I'll drop you a, a DM if you're still on the uh, on the Twitter, uh, Harry. Thank you very much, brother. I don't really know where to go from that, Pabs, to be honest. We've kind of taken a bit of a veer off. It's after, not uh... even normal. It's like such a blast from the past as well. Yeah, I know. It's such a nostalgic figure, isn't it? Um, obviously, we've, we've gone through kind of... There's been so many orgs that we've kind of come up with. Um, I remember all the way back in Cold War when we were casting over a legion and those players. And it's a shame that we haven't actually seen as many of those players actually get into champs and kind of, uh, not champs, sorry, um, challengers into like top 16, top eight. We always talk about Hams, for example. If he played the game and he got the reps, he probably would get to that level of Call of Duty. But it's good to see kind of these surface, uh, kind of like uh, grassroots orgs that are producing players um, that are slowly... Because yeah. now, a lot of the time, when we look at these kind of top 16 teams, they are quite heavily littered with a lot of players that we were casting back in the ACCL days and kind of those yeah. XP League kind of level players as you, as you come to see. But we are starting to see higher level teams enter these kind of tournaments where they come up against some of these guys. Yeah, that's it. I think Hams is a good example. I think if he'd have had the opportunity, well, he did have the opportunity, but he took a different route and probably more sensible route at that because yeah. yeah, obviously yeah. he's a radiographer now. So he's, um, he, I think he's fine with that, but he definitely had the capability. But there were so many players that had the capability as well. But you, this is part and parcel of why I love this scene is that it's so, for those that do try and put their heart and soul into it, it's so difficult to make a living in it to just try and get by. You've got to, aside from battle and the, the kind of trying to, get through the politics of it you've got to get through the fact that a large majority are probably still kind of under 25 so they're still living at home and all the pressure that that comes with so it's just you know trying to make this as as uh, legitimate a sport as possible is that is re really the key and that's something that we've always tried to support is trying to make to make, make this as legitimate as possible so that it isn't as difficult but you know the last couple of years it's almost felt like you know Call of Duty's been working against it we know how small the prize pools and the overall prize pool for challenges has just kept being reduced year on year and made it more yeah. difficult and, and then the politics that comes into play and one of the big things that's always annoyed me is the fact that it's still largely a friends league so you know sometimes the stats don't count for anything and sometimes it's about the vibes and you know a lot of players have missed opportunities or not been given them because of that and you know you only have to look at Wee Man potentially as someone that's been overlooked time and time again to get into the CDL when that happens to players that aren't necessarily as talented as him but who could populate the challenges scene so yeah it's nice to get down with these kind of level of players and start to see who are the next Felixes that are going to come up someone that we followed you know right from the start in terms of like his 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 whole career and now he's yeah. playing on probably one of if not you know the, the, the joint top team in challenges in the world like there's there's no one really FC Black and Omit they they they're the top three teams you would suggest maybe in terms of their like popularity and size team war huge obviously so Felix making it almost all the way you know he's he's at the precipice yeah. of potentially you know if he has a great final finale to this season then he, he puts himself in the shop window for the for the next season of CDL which is yeah. wild to have that conversation major we never you know we wanted that always wanted that for him but. Yeah, I mean, I remember in Modern Warfare 2, I think I've mentioned it a few times when he got onto the team with Gizmo, Harry, I think, and I can't remember who the other two were now off the top of my head, but he was running SMG on that team, obviously, for Team War now. It looks as though he is kind of running that more comfortable um, AR role, saying that, though, yeah. with, with how good the uh, the SMGs are on this game. <laughs> it looks as though it's just better running than SMG, but, yeah, he's kind of now at a level where he's kind of got his foot in the door he just needs to try and kind of stay at that level be around those players get more and more reps in and we know he puts the time and the effort into it it's more just now a case of producing the output to see whether or not this is his ceiling or he can kind of push up and, and get further I think he's, he's surprised people throughout his whole time playing Call of Duty uh, I still remember the times of the accusations and 
um, all, all the all the cheating and stuff. He's obviously he's flown through that now, and now he's pretty much kind of like the general, the household challenger's name, really, in, in Le Dot. But um, just a quick one on the game, guys. Apologies for the delays. We hopefully will be starting soon. We're just waiting on one of the guys from a V7. I think he's having internet issues at the moment. And meanwhile, the, the subs from Harry, just the, the noises just keep going on. So if you are still here, Harry, thank you very much, brother. I'll drop you a, a DM in, in Discord after. That is uh, that is mental generosity from, uh, from you, my good man. So thank you very much. But yeah, Pabs, Maps. We'll speak on Maps. Rio map one, very fast pace, and then we've got double Crachy, Vista, high rise. Have you have you seen much of Vista so far from uh, yeah. from from COD? Because you obviously you asked me my thoughts on it. I, I, I was very rude, mate. Sorry, I didn't ask you what you thought. Mate, I, I, it's not surprising because you've actually played with me and know how terrible I am at the game. But um, honestly, Vista and Six Star have surprised me. It's one of them weird things where I think it, you can't really judge it until you've got at least you know two or three weeks into it and started to see how everyone else plays it. Because I, the first few games on Vista, I absolutely fly and you know I was playing in a four stack, dominated the first few games, and then we came up against a team who obviously had played this quite a bit, and it was a much more difficult. Um, challenge but the actual map felt fine it ran fine you know you, you were able to kind of retake the rhythm if you if you dropped out on some maps getting back into the rhythm can be so difficult six star i think is a good example of that if you lose your rhythm in that on that map it can be so difficult but again six star as an snd map i actually quite like it but vista i think it slides quite nicely and as a hard point map i think you know you've got really super you know contentious map one you know p1 sorry you know in terms of uh, the, the the kind of fights that go down in middle you know it's all about kind of getting yourself into that position to, to then kind of take p2 but nowhere feels like nowhere at the minute feels like it's a money hill like a really like horrible hill where you just it's impossible to break there are yeah. a couple of like hills where there's where you can hold a couple of angles i think there's a um a, a, an ice cream overwatch one where you you've got yeah like the one on two, bridge angles. this is the one yeah. on bridge yeah yeah, and it's like you, you that I think that will become a bit of a battleground and become a bit contentious. And I think there's one. Oh, oh you mean um, you mean you mean P two, the one that's like down the steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's another one as well. It's towards the very corner of the map with a large building at the back. I can't remember what it is. It's like a, a gym or something at the back. But that one again is is a is a tricky one because it's only got like two real entrances to get to down the steps and, a, and around the, the the back from under the bridge. And yeah. again, it's just a weird one. But until we've played it a bit more and until I've watched a few games of. of you know the like challenger level lads play it it's going to be difficult to really nail it down but i actually don't mind both the maps s and d particularly on six star i find a lot of fun it's good if you're an smg player because there are actual routes that you can take to get to you know the, an instant fight i mean that for a player like me who, who you know is just wild it's nice to be able to get to to the middle of the map and and, and be able to get straight into a fight yeah, so we are now underway here for map number one. And I think they've called in a super sub in uh, our mate Mebo, a, a name perhaps who we do actually recognise. So I think they've called him. Not a bad player to bring in last minute, won't lie yeah, to you. Yeah, but... that's not too bad at all. But yeah, it is going to be a, a, a usual fight over on P1 and V7. They're going to look to this pickup and look to maybe major that kind of hyper aggression, that kind of only Ooh. only way a pickup team can play which isn't going to be necessarily full of strategy, but they're definitely going to be aggressive. Yeah, well... Uh... Bit of Ferox at the moment, just currently in control of that P1, but you can see those players in V7, they are now ready for the P2 hill. There's still a little bit of time remaining on this one. An illusion still going on the hunt for a couple. Nice shots there from the rival nine. I'm glad to see the rival uh, on this map and not that bloody Ram 7, mate. I don't know if you've played ranked, but <laughs> that gun is absolutely honking. It's absolutely destroyed me in ranked multiple times, but we're back to our meta guns. And at the moment, Fear Ferox looking good, just looking to try and break the P2. Honestly, I think this this like change tr attempt to change the meta from the MCW and Rival 9 is just failing miserably. The rifle is just such a beast up close. I think people are preferring some of like the swarm and things like that initially because it put the a ARs under pressure. But it's it's nonsense. The rival's a beast, and I've just been using it consistently. But it is going to be the boys from V7 who are just going to and climb their way back to tying this game up. 25 seconds plays 30. No one able to get a foot on the hill, but Matty is. He's just going to edge his way forward and try and get a quick angle down this side street. Not able to get it. Potentially going to have to make the reach out. The gun's going to... I don't know how has he survived getting shot by two players. That would normally just say flash red for me, outnumbered by two players. Yeah, so Dino 
was able to grab one before he fell. It looks as though Marzi's going to grab what remains of that scrap time. But now in the new hill, Matty is just lurking. There's going to be a heavy stack out towards the back here from V7 oh. and Illusion. We'll pick up that first kill, but it is going to be Rice who's just watching this left-hand lane, able to chop Dino down in very quick style. And it will be V7 now ready for the P3. So 25 seconds going to separate these guys at the moment, but will they realise that Marzi's going all the way around the back? He's going to head bump straight oh, in towards kill. Foggy out the back. So now opportunity to maybe try and disrupt some of these spawns. It looks as though Rice is still going to try and command this left-hand lane of the map over towards Bridge, but now those black arrows are in, and Fear Ferox, uh, Fear Ferox sorry, looking to try and uh, soak up some time. If number one, Foggy can go big, though. Ooh. Yeah, Foggy's done well there just to hold that, and that's going to allow one of his players, Mebo, the, the latest of the pickups, to just spawn out towards the back and give the boys of V7 an opportunity to get a few extra seconds. They're very close to tying this up, a few seconds remaining. A really nice hold all in. It was an attempt at a break, but Fear Ferox just not able to Ooh. deal with Foggy in the end. But again, Major, one thing we have seen is that kill feed does occasionally just go really, really black, but it's just not been enough to separate them in terms of a great deal of time. Fear Ferox just not been able to convert that into a into a stellar lead and uh, the boys from v7 esports using that aggression really nicely to stay toe to toe with them yeah and cole's looking to try and push through boxes here but it's an angle that's really awkward but v7 now looking very very good the pickup team suddenly find themselves with an opportunity to push this lead out now leading by just over 10 but keep an eye on number seven matty he will be going all the way around the back to maybe try and form a pinch meanwhile dino and marzi are going to try and push through the front but now the pinch is on two players around the back matty's going to try and collapse onto rice who's going to be the last man near the hill illusions is still in towards garage here he should fly onto him and matty able to take down two there in quick succession mebo for the third and matty cuts them down and fear ferox breaks straight back in for that scrap time that was such clever play. He gets the kill in garage, manages to close the door and manages to save himself a load of health and then manages to get the kill with that AR and it's a beautiful bit of play from Matty but again not able to turn it into a great deal of time it is going to finally be tied up as we see the next hill just going to pop over towards this catwalk not an easy one to defend especially against this super aggressive side Foggy with that first kill on this new kill and it's going to be a big place though Illusions 10 and 11 Mebo 8 and 9 lots of big scores but Matty Holding on with 12 and 8 as the kill leader in the team. 10 seconds oh, separate this team, but it does look finally. Is that the first break for Fear Ferox onto the hill? So B. Cole just going to look down this B-side street and see if he can get any picks. Yeah, Dino watching up towards top bridge, able to win the first engagement. He's still got another one potentially onto Rice, though, but the hesitation, the sliding from Dino, just milking quite a decent chunk of time here. And it looks as though with 20 seconds left, unless he hits this pinch incredibly quickly, it will be the remaining time going in favour of Fear Ferox. So now on the contest goes Illusions. How many can he grab? One kill. Not going to get any more, though. So the lead change will go in favour of Fear Ferox once again. And this man on your screen here, Marzi, 13 and 6 from him. A really stellar performance in the opening set of hills. But now we get ready for the P1. Mebo going onto the chow. Marzi shots are crisp. And now only a couple away from streaks. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a moment now for Fear Ferox. They've got themselves a slender lead, but it does look like the boys of V7 are going to get set up. It is going to be a full stack onto this hill. So, again, not necessarily looking to try and get that P2 right now. You can see number six, NB Cole, just going to make his way through. He's going to have number one there. Opportunity to challenge. Does get taken down by Vendy. So, oh, four dead. Big plays there. Marzi and Dino just absolutely going off. Nine and ten for him on a two streak. And we've got Marzi on a five. One off that cruise. So big opportunity. They haven't been able to break this. So V7 Esports back within ten. But the time is starting to take the way of Fiat Ferox. And you're going to see one player set up over towards P2. But I don't think he's going to realise those players from V7 Major are behind him. Yeah, well, now Illusions, he flies round. Can they do a bit of bait and switch here? There's a couple of players here, but both will fall. They've still got to deal with Rice, though. He's over towards this is big. the back of Black Gate. Can he win it? No, he can't. Cole with another big gunfight win in the back. But again, a trade there from Mebo. The last minute super sub proving to be a good one. Foggy, though, all the way out the back, able to win that gunfight. And I don't know if Marzi managed to get his streaks or not. I'll have to double check because I don't think he did, but it will be no. a. An opportunity. I think I'm, I think I'm pressing the right buttons here, but it's not letting me show it, mate. Down. But yeah, I don't think he got the streak, if I'm honest. Yeah, no. Mate, I'm streak. telling you, customs is, they've definitely done something to customs, man. Because my my um, loadouts didn't come into the game when I went into it, but <laughs> it is what it is. We just move on. And uh, Marcy again, just looking to try and remain in control. Oh. It is going to be 20 seconds, potentially going the way of the boys in black. Fear Ferox with an and kind of starting to 
push that lead out to about 30 seconds and mate this is where you start to worry at this kind of late stage in uh, in p2 uh, sorry in the, the early stage in the second rotation you start to get concerned once you get into that like 40 second territory it was very difficult on this map to start to bring things yeah. back well, I was going to say, with the, the kills that they aren't getting at the moment, V7, they've done well to even stay within touching distance of this one so far, but Rice going to be the low man in the hill, bait and switch from Cole, but unfortunately the bait just gets left straight out in the open, Illusion's going to go hunting for one, and he should fly onto Matty any second now, is Matty going to win that gunfight, he's somehow still alive through all of this, his teammates are desperately trying to straggle over to get some help towards him. But everyone on the side of V7 is completely locked in. But now in fly the SMGs. Cole with one. Can he get a second? Oh, it's actually going to be a team nade, which might be a big hindrance to them here in this push because it was looking good for them. Matty out the back, though. Do they anticipate him? No, they don't. There's one for Matty. Can't get the second with the Renetti. And with 16 seconds remaining, V7 are going to tie this one up. Mate, that is exactly what they needed to do with a 40 second deficit. They brought it back to 10 seconds, near above 12 seconds to be exact. You just feel if, if Rice is, is able to get a few kills while he's on the hill, this could be a slightly closer game. 149, no, you cannot complain about that here. A kind of hill kit and average right there. He's done so well. But again, V7 as a pickup doing really well to maintain the contest. And they've got themselves major almost every time set up on each and every hill and they just put the pressure on for your Ferox to try and break them. They've been able to do it, but it's largely oh, been on the back of, you know, 25 seconds remaining. So expect this lead to change at some point, but it's going to be Marzi again looking to cause a ton of trouble. But Mebo, the late pickup, just looking to put more pressure onto those players, trying to push over from this white van side. Yeah, they are stacking heavy in boxes now. No pun intended. But now everyone flying on. Mebo, first man through the door. Able to get one. Run out of bullets for the second, though. But surely there's going to be a trade close. One pick for Foggy. Needs to get the second. And May just throws himself straight over the top. Potentially a little bit careless there from him. But now, 13 seconds again. And somehow, V7 will find themselves just in the lead ever so slightly. But it is going to be the boys from Fear Ferox ready and set up for this next Bridge Hill. And now it's going to be down to V7 to try and break in. Rice, though, in towards top mid. Cole's going to drag one down with him there as he takes down oh, Foggy before he's huge. traded out. But now you've still got to deal with Dino. He's trying to play his life. But Mebo with a huge two-piece means that V7 are now going to be in potentially an opportunity to get in and get some time. I don't think they realise that Matty has managed to work his way up in towards top mid here. Might be able to drop onto a few players off the top rope. Any second from him. There's one. Can he look for a second onto Mebo? Yes, he can. And Matty, big two-piece coming through. Three fall down. Make that four. And Fear Ferox break back in. Yeah, that was absolutely vital right there. V7 did so well to control the middle ground, then control Catwalk. Mebo with a two-piece, but it is going to be, I believe it was going to be Illusion that was trying to push through, and he got taken down. So now, nice opportunity to Fear Ferox to be able to just get themselves set up and get a slender lead. But Major, Ooh. this is far from being done right now. It is going to be a seven-second lead, only 10 seconds Don't available you. on this. Potentially going the way of V7 as we head back now to a third rotation. We're back on P1, Major, and this is anyone's game right now oh he doesn't check his corner <laughs> illusion goes down Mebo does as well so v7 are on the initial here they fly around the corner though fear ferox they've got the bodies to make the trades foggy's laying prone but it doesn't matter because dino just located over towards you it's just chopped down two players matty has done exactly the same and now v7 find themselves scrambling now to try and work something illusion on the pinch is marzi going to make the read i don't think he is he's going to get shot straight in the back here so there's one pick but now the players coming from eskies as well as rice charges up through in towards mid but can matty hold the fort not on that occasion he goes down it's getting very scrappy in towards the p1 neither side can win this but this is huge time now pablo getting ready for p2 yeah, this is going to go back and forth. Cole again back on there, just trying to cause problems. Meepo with another fantastic two-piece. Again, no one can win it from this, so the battle for P2 is going to ensue. Really brave oh, play from fight. V7 Esports. They managed to get a 2v2 oh. man pinch around that, but can they get onto P2? This is where it's going to end, folks, oh. right here. Well, Foggy up through the front. Can he get the first kill? Yes, he can. Foggy with the first. Needs to be quick, though. There's still a few players out the back that they've got to get rid of. Cole just laying prone. They're going to try and get rid of the trophies and now get the ordinance onto oh, that man on the point but with only 14 seconds left perhaps they gotta go quick 
Yeah, they're going to have to fly in right now. That's going to oh. be a big kill from Rice. He's been quiet all game, 15 and 19, but that's going to be huge. We see four fall with 14 seconds to go. V7 Esports are going to upset the apple cart, knock the bananas over. This could be everything with only six seconds remaining. Fear Ferox on the front foot for a large portion of the game. Are they going to be able to do it? Shots oh. being fired. Under the car, oh. can he get the third? No, he can't. V7 Esports clutch victory from the jaws of defeat. Oh, underdogs question mark. Absolutely not what a hell of a map that was from those guys jesus v7 somehow managing to claw that one back we thought for a second there that p2 rotation was pretty much there for fear ferox to hold on perhaps but v7 just using absolute brute force and the gunny coming through there 250 236 in the end well we thought it might potentially be a quick 3-0 mate i don't think that's going to be the case Mate, Mebo was a pickup there. He got some absolutely blinding two pieces towards mm. the end. That absolutely changed the game in that sec, particularly in the latter part of the second rotation, man, where things completely changed. We saw Fear Ferox start to get under the the kind of onto the back foot. Then, but time and time again, not getting set up, not rotating really as well as you would expect, kind of the overdogs to do. Um, it was largely always V7 who just seemed to have whoever was an in-game leader in that game making call outs. Absolutely nailed it. There they were most of the time you know we thought at one point in that latter part i think it might have been p5 in that second rotation it did look like at some point that that fear ferox was going to be able to break back in but they just weren't able to do it and it ends up on a p2 in the third rotation and it all comes down to who can get the most kills and we see rice get a couple and then mebo again with a two-piece to see the game out 250 to 236 i mean what a what a start to a night of call of duty oh mate well that's map one potentially out of five so We'll have to see how map two goes. Obviously, one thing you would assume, Pabs, is a team like Fear Ferox, if they're a solid four, their strats for SMG will be a little... Uh, SMG, SND. Um, brains fried, mate. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> SND will be a little bit more refined um, than V7. But saying that, SM SND is a, a bit of a weird game mode with some of these pickup teams. Sometimes it just clicks, and sometimes if they're getting first bloods and they're kind of winning their individual gunfights it doesn't matter how good your strat is if they manage to somehow hold on um in this map two and v7 do take this all of a sudden fear ferox are on the uh the potential card for a a, a swift 3-0 battering which i wouldn't have assumed considering the way these teams are stacked in the division obviously the way the v7 have been working with pickup teams you never really know kind of what you're going to get but after taking a hard point off of fear ferox you think map two now v7 you're thinking right okay the wind is well and truly in our sails now yeah i think I think the thing to consider is that Fear Ferox, if they're a settled side that have been playing together for a while on a map that's been in rotation since the start, they should have this should be as close to a six hour as possible. Um, but you've got to look to the psychological impact of just losing out on that first hard point. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult hard point. Rio mixes things up. It, you know, it's diff it's difficult to once you lose the rhythm i've had this argument with brody right if you lose 20 30 seconds it's so difficult to make it back up and we saw v7 were able to do that in that latter rotation i think that whether that plays a part is going to be interesting fear ferox if they're the settled side got no excuse not to win this yeah well marzi is going right on the adventure train oh he's not seen that man underneath him he will be round the back of a couple though illusion whoa look at the timing on this right he's seen at least one <gasps> Hasn't seen the second, though, so the man on the bomb will drop. Unfortunately, the smoke isn't going to stop the bullets landing straight in the backside of Rice. So first blood goes in favour of Fear Ferox. Fox is still in this corner, though. This is surely going to be a free pick. Meanwhile, Mebo falls as well. Yeah, really interesting play from Matty. They manages to get out as well, so players not able to see each other we do see another kill it's going to be illusion all on his own as you see oh. Dino put some bullets in and that's going to be an absolute slaying right there and as you said Fear Ferox really got no excuse not to do this this is theirs to lose as such but again some you know brave play come at the very start managing to get a, a pick major could have been so different that one player you know potentially could have had two or three kills off the rip so just shows you how close these games can be i i think this is a weird one for v7 i think they've just got to you know almost play this like ranked just get aggressive break the rhythm just try and get in the players faces um and, and just try and up, you know, kind of upset the the any strategy that Fear Ferox might try and employ you with just some wild plays. Yeah, I think you've just got to either kind of coordinate a heavy stack with everyone, or uh, just try try and play picks like individually um, to see if you can grab one. And it will be unfortunately V7, a first blood coming through from a nade. So 
It looks as though Rice is going to be very busy here. The smoke is out, so the players will now start to form on the point. But now, when is Rice going to drop onto the man? He's going to fly straight onto the site. Cole's going to have no idea. There's one for him. He's going to surely get traded out any second. Yet, Matty able to grab the first pick in response. But it will now be an opportunity to maybe try and trap these players in. But meanwhile, Dino over towards top third. They need to try and get him out. And unfortunately, now Mebo's the last man up. Yeah, it's a kind of confidence in Mebo though. I think he's like flying. Oh, I think he thinks he can potentially get this, but the chase is going to be oh, on. Dino, it. oh, no. it's going to be right there. And there it is. The execution, that's just not what you need. But that really testament to the confidence. It does look like they've kind of chalked Matt Warner mentally and just said, yep, yeah, let's just get into this. We're a solid side. We know how to play this S&D. These are the pickup team. Let's put them to the sword. Is that a 4-0 for Dino off the rip? Yep. Not a bad start. <laughs> I, I, I you... wish I got them starts in s and <laughs> I mean, if you needed to wake up, those first two rounds are uh, very much a case for uh, how to do it because the only kill that is on the side of E7 is in the pocket of Rice, and there's only one. So Dino now on a four streak. So we'll stay on ball with him to see if he can get that potential fifth and sixth. But now, where are V7 going to try and take this bomb? It looks as though the A site might be the uh, the destination of choice. Number six here in Cole is going to try and wrap round, but the first blood this time goes in favour of the boys in green. Yeah, that's a nice kill as well, Foggy. Making up for eating the nade in the previous round. It is going to put them on the front foot, but again, we're going to see Marcy just put Illusion into the next round, and it's going to be three V3 with Rice still got bomb. Again, still looking to try and get a little bit of control at the bomb site before come getting the confidence to put it down, but Marzi in a really nice position, but I don't know whether Mebo's six sense is tingling Ooh. there. This is going to be a nice pick, but is he going to read the play above him? No, he manages to dip, though. Is he going to be able to get that kill? Yes, it is going to be Marzi, though. Oh, he puts it into a 2v2 major with 40 on the clock and Rice still yet to get bombed down. Yeah, well, bomb has gone down. Are they going to make the read? The Matty's making the pinch around the back here. Both players, unfortunately for him, are going to be directly underneath him and not over towards top red. And now, oh, did they spot Foggy in towards that mid-cut? I think they did. So, 28 seconds. They've got to go quickly here. The door will slam open. Rice, though, he's going to be backed up a little bit. He might get shot on the back here, Matty, if he's not quick enough, because number one in Foggy is now actually going to be the last man up. The nade on the point. Can he manage to get these guys off of it? He's got to try and take the man off the top rope, oh. and he can't do it. Marzi sticks to the fuse, and it will be another round on the board for the boys of Fear Ferrex. Yeah, really nice play. Really nice patient retake as well. They got lucky a little bit in the sense that they didn't eat, you know, more nade um, at that moment. And obviously nice picks at the end from Matty, who's also 3-0 and right now. So big plays from Fear Ferox. We expected that they would potentially do really well in this against the pickup side. But yeah, they, you know, again, it's, it's entirely theirs to lose. So playing with this kind of patience, playing exactly how they need strategically, it's just the way to get this to a tied one all game. You just fear that going into two back to back respawns, have they got the firepower to deal with V7 beyond yeah. that? So, going to be very, very interesting. You know, players like Marzi now on a four and Matty on a throw. Did Major, does it creep oh, in about the idea of potentially getting a cruise at this kind of level? Yeah, I mean, it's doable. But it's whether or not you can actually make the most of it. That's the thing that we see a lot of players waste. Woohoo, Cole. Just absolutely fries foggy by barrels. And the first blood again goes in favour from Fear Ferox. So V7 is kind of going from bad to worse for them here in this search and destroyer. They're struggling to deal with anything that they throw at them. But Mebo, speaking of throwing, he throws a nade right in the back pocket of Marzi and he will manage to even it up. So there should be another trade in towards mid here from Rice, who's desperately going on the hunt for another player to pick off. Mebo's done really well, actually, over towards that site. But there's so much info there for Rice. They know they're on the site now. They've got to try and plant the bomb. Yeah, it's going to be a 2v2. Matty and Dino up against Rice and Mebo. Mebo playing... Three and three right now. Rice one and three. You feel illusion could just get off that donut and start to contribute. They oh, might be able to cheeky. get off this donut, but again, <gasps> the smoke is going to go oh. down. Don't know. We think oh. he may have seen those players cross. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult to tell. Mebo without a reaction, it just doesn't look like he's seen those two players cross. Surely Rice with some information now. Yeah, it's going to get the chase is on. So. You can see that transition just starting to happen. Meepo still over towards the other side. So oh. knows it's going to be a 1v2. Really unusual play. And again, Major probably more prescient um, and more respective of a team that it are, are indeed a pickup side. Yeah, I'm amazed that Meepo didn't kind of go with him there because he I saw that play honestly... across left. And I think he was maybe hoping that they were doing a bit of a double bluff there, but they didn't. They went straight to the site and got the bomb down. So now Meepo up against Matty and Dino. Oh, the timing is horrendous. I think Matt is, uh, Dino's going to pinch him straight around the back, and he is. So, yeah, nice work there from him. And it will be 
the boys from Fear Forex with another round. It was a very close map one, Pabs, but map two is far from it. 4 0 now. Yeah, this is what we thought might happen. Again, this is, you know, indicative of a team that have that have largely, you know, just got together, just picked up. And again, you see in some individual performances that you would think, yeah, this is, you know, potentially going to get them off the donut. But right now, Fear playing it to, to perfection. 3-0 for Matty, 6-1 for Dino. And again, they're going to just combine for the five with the, the, the nade taking Marzi off a of four. So... Right now, Fear Ferox looking very, very strong. Again, this is—is is this the point though where they start to trial a few ideas, play a little bit more aggressively? Is the confidence in their strategy kind of blinded them to the confidence in their, their gun skills? So again, Mebo gets the first blood. Time for the boys V7 to take advantage of that. Yeah. Can they work as a team though? I say he's doing the Lord's work at the moment. It's Mebo, currently four and four. And the rest of his team are only combining for two kills between the lot of them. So, potentially another kill on the cards. Has Mebo spotted Matty over towards that heady? No. But now, surely that's going to be the green light for Rice to charge at him. He's just waiting for some more bullets to be exchanged. He's got to be quick, though. But now, off he flies. Is he going to check that corner? He's not. Oh, he is just about. Luckily, the comm that he was weak was there. And he was able to get that pick. But now, meanwhile, over towards the other side of the map, you've got Marzi and Colt who are now split up, looking to try and reply with at least one kill of their own. So nade onto the bomb check isn't going to get anything. And meanwhile, Marzi is on the complete other side of the map here. Should be a kill, and it is. Yeah, that's going to leave Marzi all on his own. He's going to try and find his way up to that top third. He's going to push across and oh, get shots. himself a quick, really nice, crisp shots there as he makes a little bit of work. And he's not going to be able to pick the player over towards mid. This is going to be largely a game of cat and mouse as the players in V7 just look to try and get off this donut. Foggy just nicely set up for that player, potentially pushing through, and that's going to be a pick right there. Foggy not going to be the player to get it, and there's going to be off the donut onto that one. And this is the, we talk about potentially, you know, that that that's a team that's a pick up, but they've started to slow things down. They got the first blood, Mebo managing to get that first kill, and they've made it count. So, you know, it's not off the cards that they're not going to be able to get another round on the board and then start to apply pressure to Fear Ferox, who, you know, we saw just start to wilt a little bit in the hard point. Is this going to happen in the S and D? Well. That's not a bad start there. One round on the board, but they're gonna to have to get three in a row now just to try and tie it up. So we'll see what V7. I've got an offer on the defensive side. Because they have lost a lot of first bloods while defending, it must be said. But now it looks as though it's going to be a very, very heavy mid stack here. From the boys of Fear Ferox. And number six in Cole has managed to get himself in a really good position underneath a couple of players. But is anyone on the side of V7 going to spot him in bottom mid? It looks as though there's going to be a plethora of gunfights to pick from any second now because they are just waiting patiently and now there's one Matty just flies straight over towards the back of bridge he goes down and this will surely start a lot of gunfights now there's a second though Mebo's able to reply with one of his own as well Dino grabs one onto Rice and there's another gunfight going down towards the back they are dropping like flies at the moment Fear Ferox Pabs and it looks as though this round might be done and it is yep on real plays so <laughs> this is a weird one to break down they get like a little bit of mid control but again it just looks like they're trying to hedge the bets to whether they need to transition you know if they're going to B, if it goes wrong they can transition to a they took up the position in mid but rather than like try and consolidate it rather than try and clear out you know top third or try and get control of chicken or any way get control of the bomb site they just push through how what was he expecting other than to get cut down by pushing through like that and this is what we talk about in terms of them starting to wilt a little bit in the latter stages of the first game looks like this is starting to happen now fear ferox fear being the, the word I guess and v7 esports tails up one more on the board and you know that that three rounds that they needed looking less and more and more likely oh well illusion maybe getting a little bit too overzealous as he <laughs> charges straight down mid into the bullets and now the pace has completely stagnated over towards that b site two players in the form of foggy and rice are just waiting for the time to push for this next pick Ideally has to be green. Oh, he's playing with fire at the moment is Mebo. Dino just over the top is uh, not going to get hit him on that occasion, but he's going to run straight into Cole. Nice work there from Fear Forex. They're winning every single individual gunfight. And now Foggy, last man up. Oh. Mate, I, I'm baffled. I mean, you go from the sublime to the ridiculous V7, you know, tails up in the air, and then they make some illusions with hyper-aggression through mid, gets picked out. Foggy... Triggers dead silence and then runs down probably one of the longest 
portions of the of the most open portion of the map. It, it, again, it's just baffling. I just I don't even know where to begin with that crazy plays. <laughs> but again, it puts them on the back foot. Three round deficit restored for Fia Ferox. And again, this is kind of the result we expected if they take this round six two. Probably indicative of a side that have played well together and for a while together. So you know, first blood though, all important, especially for V seven who really do get off on the confidence of it. Yeah, well, Illusion is on his own over towards eight, and three players on the side of Fear Ferox are just waiting. I think they've all gone in towards top red apart. Oh, no, no, there's two down low, actually. Oh, here we go. How many can he grab? Illusion with one. Not able to get any more, though, so the trade from Colt is instant. But more importantly, the information of these players being nearby is going to be the gold dust that they need, and it's going to be Mevo oh, that's gone. isolated over towards the side. Oh, but there is a teammate, actually. That is not ideal. So now Dino over towards the back of Scrapyard. Is he going to make the read that Foggy's making the pinch? Oh, the COD timing is criminal. And surely if Foggy gets this kill, oh, he's playing it a little bit too cautiously, maybe, to hoover up at least one of these players. Dino's now repositioned. He spots him, and importantly so, Dino grabs that pick. Rice now... Needs the one versus two to keep his team alive. In this one, he's not going to do it, and it will be a, uh, a very textbook win there from Fear Ferox in the search pads. Yeah, that's exactly what we expected. We thought they would potentially get take this by, you know, uh, uh, you would say a slap 6-2, very confident. He thought they threw the rounds away that they did lose, but that's exactly how a team that have played together and have strategies, especially on a map that's been in rotation as long as Karachi has. So nice plays from them to tie things up. We do head into what is usually a pivotal map in a series in control. So yep. it's gonna, again on Karachi, I believe, as well. So this is one of the, you would suggest this is a mixier map than, say, them say high rise so that i think there's more potential for v7 to do well on this map than there would be say on high rise where things can just get out of control and i think it's a little bit it's a little bit more balanced so this should be interesting to see how v7 pick things up but again with the team as comfortable as they are together you would expect fear ferox to, to go on to take this control but again you know we saw them start to wilt into the latter stages of the hard point so is that going to happen again in karachi control well, we'll have to wait and see. There's been a lot of times where we've tried to uh, predict, assume and predict. And how many times have we got it wrong? Uh, more often than not, <laughs> it usually goes tits up. So yeah. we'll have to wait and see. But we are at least guaranteed, perhaps, that Vista on map four. So it'll be an interesting map to see how that one goes between these guys. Obviously, that kind of pickup uh, team in, in V7 are probably looking at that going, right, how many reps have Fear Ferox got on that map? Because it might be a case of... They've got a few, but not necessarily a huge number of comfortable reps. So, like, you, it was a good point. Actually, you mentioned kind of Karachi, one that's been in the rotation a little bit longer. Fear Ferox are likely to have that one a bit more refined, whereas Map 4, not necessarily the case. Yeah. So, like you say, this could be a really, really pivotal map here if V7 are going to cause the upset. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is exact. This is perfect almost for V7 in many ways. The problem they face is. You know, if they're not able to take this and they're able to put them under pressure in Vista, they go into hard an S and D at the end, which is just going to obviously play into the favour of Fear Ferox. So again, this is just going to, you know, they could do with winning this map massively and making the map, uh, the Vista map, the the one to play for. But again, it is going to be the the boys in black just looking to get that uh, that kill feed rocking straight off the rip it is going to be only one kill but finally there's going to be illusions just get another pick to make this a one kill deficit no one yet managed to get any time onto the zone so just going to be all about jockeying for position that's a big kill major and it's looking very tidy right now for fear ferox yeah well dino's just waiting for that number two in rice to drop over the top of him he does spot him and in towards bedroom he goes and in towards bedroom he falls. So Dino now on a three. Mebo <laughs> off the top rope. And unfortunately, he's lost his head in midair as Dino cuts him down. These are an important set of kills, actually. If he can get both players on the point here, there's one. There's going to be another right next to him. He doesn't anticipate there that Illusions is going to be literally right in his back pocket. And it will be one tick of progress. But unfortunately for them, they've got to try and deal with Matty Pabs over towards this scrapyard area. He might be able to start chewing through a few players here. Yeah, you can see them trying to put some pressure with the nade, but it's not going to do that. And a couple of stuns go out. Is he going to get that pick? Yeah, really nice plays with the rival. Oh. No, he gets that second kill. Matty proven again just how difficult he is to deal with time. Not on the side of V7 Esports. And again, they're going to find it very difficult to pick oh, himself man. up. And AR manages to chew through another player. Matty becomes the oh. turret over towards Scrapyard, making short work of V7. Turning them into Scrap. And with three seconds on the clock, finally get themselves over 
over towards the A zone, but it is potentially going to be all those players just locked oh, up there. Number three in illusion, the lone player on A, as Matty Major just rips wow. through them for a Fear Ferox win. Yeah, they just didn't deal with him. They were kind of one at a time trying to get towards that A point, but unfortunately, they just got cut down when they tried. And if they managed to get across, they just got cut down in mid. So Dino, six and two. Matty off to a flyer. Very, very strong opening round, it must be said here for the boys. Of Fear Ferox, and now it's going to need a quite a substantial regain round after that one, Pabs, because they have been well and truly thumped in that opening one. And Matty's got a streak to work with. Yep, I had Cole barely picked his pad up. He just, you know, reminisce watching some old ICG takeover videos just to uh, remind himself of, of, of what quality he can bring to a team right now. V7 really got to fly back. It's going to be a very strong A push, so that's going to take the boys in green by surprise. They're going to have to largely push from over the B side, and that's going to be 3 4 major. And this Jeez, could be very, very streak. quick indeed for that A. So difficult to read the zones when everything's in black. Oh, finally, they've killed him. <laughs> he is human. But now, unfortunately for them, Marzi's now one off streak. So that A point is done. B is now pending, and Cole is putting them to the sword. So combining eight now for Cole and Marzi. Why? Somehow needs to try and stay alive. He can't oh. do it, unfortunately, for him. But Cole now in the back. Oh, big kill, actually. But now they've got the power positions. Those players are going to have to try and jump over towards that half wall. Not ideal. And now with Matty locked in this position. It's going to be so difficult. Anyone who bobs their head off is going to get slapped straight back down. And that's exactly what's happening. First tick through. Second tick pending. You can see Mebo on the minimap number four. He's looking for a pinch. But he's going to have to go so, so quickly. And unfortunately, I think he's going to get caught on the flank. And he is. So second tick's done. Green arrow's flooding towards it. But they're getting cut down one at a time. Nobody's going to be anywhere near touching. Rice is going to be the closest man. He might have the same treatment as well off the gunny. And wow, that is two very, very quick rounds. And this control blinking, you're, you're going to miss it. 2 11 on the clock. What are we seeing? 11 and 2 from Matty, who has controlled, dominated, and put pressure immediately onto V7. They've made them look so amateur in this game. An incredible performance so far. And going into the third, the third round, I mean, V7 have just got to get any kills, any control. This is just going to be such a nightmare for them. The dominance coming out of Fear Ferox in this control round is just insane so far. Well, they've got to keep this man quiet, that's for sure. And he's close to lapping streaks. So are we going to see it right off the rip? The boys in V7, they are going to just stack in towards that opening hill. There's a lot of players there. Matty's still waiting for anyone to try and push through Coop. Nobody's going to do it. And now, unfortunately, they're going to be like fishing a barrel on towards the point. There's a lot of trophies, though. But there's also going to be a lot of Matties who fly onto it. It will be three that fall straight off the blink. Two ticks going to come through instantly. But look what they've just given them again. Pabs Dino this time is going to be the man over towards Scrapyard. And Cole over towards this right side of the map. Only able to get one pick. But Dino might be a bit of a problem here. Yeah, this is going to be huge. He's oh, not going to have the same kind of presence that Matty had. He took up way too much of an exposed again. position and gets taken down. Matty, it doesn't matter where you plonk him. He's just going to cause trouble. Not able to get the kill there, though. So it is going to force him to back up. Is he going to get it? Yes, he puts Mebo into the blender. Matty just oh. seems to take up such smart positions and get the pick. So right now, it has been, everything has been about Matty. 14 and 2, not able to get the pick. Rice with a big one there and still not able to get over that. And it is looking like Major, they're just going to give up on A for the time being and try and get some presence over towards B but it doesn't matter which way they go the clock's against them this team and black are against them and right now they are on Ooh. the back foot well that's much better there from Illusion but look at the man in Cole only able to grab one pick and now are we going to see Matty bend it like Beckham he's going to have to try and get it straight in towards Calf any coffees nope nothing to be seen so it will be a really big option now as to what Ferox do. Are they going to try and body what? their way through the back? They're just going to try and bang their head against the wall and it's going to work exactly. So all of a sudden, V7 looked as though they were in such a prime position to stack the point and stop those players, but they just bodied them straight over that jump up and all of a sudden find themselves holding on for a little bit longer. I, I thought they were going to fight from within oh, the place. No. Oh, Rice is just absolutely bodied illusion with a with a nade oh. straight in the back pocket. And it's going to be Dino just controlling this bus, bus stop area. Manages to get some shots out the time. And is he going to get the turn? No, it's only going to realise he gets a shot in. I thought illusion was going to cock that up then. But still, there's going to be Matty over towards this top 
AC area time and it's just not great there. I don't think he's realised two players oh. have jumped in. Nice little pirouette from Matty, but no kills thus far. Looking to try and get into control. Nice pick. Is he going to be able to control this scrapyard one more time? Going to be a pick out the back. Manages to push through, but don't think he realises the player is quite above him. Gets finally taken down, Major. 40 on the clock. Seven lives plays 14. And Fear Ferox still in control. Yeah, Dino's holding the cross. Towards bottom red. Oh, some rough timing there for him. But now, Matty out the back of the point. Those green arrows are now starting to swarm ever closer. Now, when does Mebo go? He's able to win the first gunfight, and he actually manages to play his life really well. Can they manage to deal with the men in the back? Yes, they can. There's one. Dino, so one shot. He goes down, and all of a sudden, the green arrow's on the point again. Cole, can he manage to punch himself in? Illusion puts himself in cubby, what? which leaves him open to some shots there. Some crisp shots, it must be said, from Cole. But now the green arrow is flooding once more. Can Matty prove to be the spoiler once more? He's just trying to play his life, actually, while his teammates try and help him out. Renetti out, and that, unfortunately, oh, is going to mean that they run out of time. Fear Ferox <laughs> take it 3-0 incredible performance in that control that's the fear ferox that we were talking about as we went into the game the favorites the players who you know only i think they'd only dropped one map in the in the previous so yeah this has been an incredible performance but they've got to carry this on into hard point and they did look like a different side in that first hard point major so Oof. big opportunity now potentially for v7 to you know maybe to put the pressure back on them but what a performance matty being the superstar of that game yeah yeah, that was a fucking, that was an absolutely huge map there from May. 18 and 6, he finished in the end. So the uh, kill to death ratio looking mighty fine for him there, Pabs. But yeah, I think that's just kind of pick up team standard of control as you'd come to expect. Obviously, a little bit of mismatch in terms of strategy, not quite on the same page. They gave it a go. They had a couple of opportunities in there to actually stack the point. But unfortunately, Fear Ferox just looked a little bit too refined. I think it, with with V seven a couple of rogue decisions, a couple of you know they they obviously got pinned down by Matty in that second map, and it was the second round, and it just made things really difficult for them to just get out of spawn. But when they had opportunities, they made some crazy decisions, or so they you know they got they didn't have any Overwatch, so they decided to go for a three man stack. As soon as they one Overwatch player gets dealt with, then they just did as you said, they just turkeys in a battle or you know shooting fish in a battle, um, and it just makes it really difficult. So again, just no real strategy was the boys in fear ferox get control of the area first and then manage to stack the hill so nice plays from them but vista man this is a wild card right now so this could be you know the genius from uh the boys of v7 or this could be via ferox could have been playing this all week long well we'll have to wait and see it's like exciting times for us perhaps because we get to see what kind of criminal spawns activision have decided to throw <laughs> in on this map already criminal all out as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's over there and he's he's over here. So um yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I think the guys are pretty much ready to go for that map number four. But main thing, Pabs, I think now for V7 is to not have a slow start. The last thing you're gonna want is Fear Ferox stringing a few hills together. We know that there's a couple of hills that you can string. There's one over towards that bar area and it goes towards kind of like the back corner of the map, which are quite close together. So holding those back spawns can be quite important. But also that bridge hill, from what I've seen, a few teams have really got that on lock at the moment from being able to kind of keep a man. Yeah, I think it's got two levels where you can actually hold the time on that hill. You can either keep the man alive on the top of the bridge or you can keep him kind of behind the bridge down low on the, that rocky area. So um, we'll have to see kind of how these guys decide to play I think one of the things for that as well is it's got quite a short flank. So if you do always need someone watching any yeah. potential players coming in from around the back, which makes it more difficult because you've got two or three levels that of, of entry from the front as well, which just makes it quite difficult. But this is why I do like this map because it's it there's no way really that you can hold down in a horrible way so good opportunity and we know this first hill is just absolutely disgusting <laughs> yeah. it all comes down to this back bar and just who can yeah. use the, the the heady to the best advantage i was gonna say this man on the screen here matt he's probably gonna have a good time in p1 because it is very very energetic out he flies smg in hand and it looks very very good in his hand ever more at the moment from matty him and dino inside the hill just double stacking it for now you can see number two on the mini map rice is already rotating towards p2 pab so a lot of heavy emphasis from him looking to try and lock that down but meanwhile it's towards bar matty and marzia just having a whale of a time and they are serving up drinks left right and center 
Yeah, you can see very much this is the kind of kill where you do want one player in it and everyone else needs to control the geography around it so that the players just cannot get into the hill and then the player on the hill just becomes the last line of defence. But again, oh. a lot of emphasis from V7 has been onto this P2 Rice. Going to have to get control of Ice Cream in here and he does do that. Not able to get the pick though and Dino able to just get the shot. And again, you're just going to see this setup. Dino is going to get picked out, but it's not going to be the end of the world for Fear Ferro because they've got themselves a disgusting lead so far. Marzi's just going to be there potentially to get picks but again choose at the wrong time just to run and there is going to get taken down and now Matty is on his way to cause all kinds of problems again they want to get control major of this ice cream window otherwise it will cause problems for them yeah well I don't know if um I don't know if two trophies GA is still a thing I'm pretty sure I've just seen three trophies fly from v7 obviously where they've got the pickup team they don't quite know who's running trophies and who isn't i'm pretty sure i see three flying out but regardless fear ferox doesn't matter to them and doesn't matter to cole at the moment who's going all the way around the back to potentially pick up a few couple of freebies should spot at least one there onto rice so first pick comes through he's going to dip away to the underground and he's going to fly straight onto foggy as well who has no idea of his whereabouts rice spawning out the back should be dead to rights if he decides to try and pick this one he's going to take his mate down first no. and cole with four look at the fifth wall almost almost not quite able to but the damage is done marzi now is going to find himself out the back and they are literally putting them to the swords in terms of kills yeah it's been a really nice hold on this p2 and this is if there is one hill that you can kind of get to grips with and and really get some time out of it is this one but it does rely on you your team to just spread out a little bit and make sure that all those entry and egress points are dealt with but right now this is going to be absolute horror for v7 they're going to find themselves constantly chalking map hills and looking to try and, you know, get set up on the next hill. That is a nice play by Illusion, who manages to get a three-piece there, brings him to eight and eight, and applies a little bit of pressure. And you can see the race is now on to try and get set up for this back P4, which is another potential money hill if you are able to lock it yep. down. But again, there's going to be big plays coming out of Matty and Rice there as they try and get control of this crit this is the kill i was talking about major it's a wild kill but one if you can get control that you can get a lot of yeah. time on but look where number six cole is he's in the back and he's going to prove to be a bit of a nuisance potentially a little bit of an overtrail there onto illusion but now look at those green arrows spawning at the top left of the map so they're going to have to try and cross essentially what is no man's land anyone with a sub trying to run across that is not going to have a very christmasy experience it must be said marzi holding the cross dino's doing it as well they're going to have to that's a big kill actually from rice in the back because they know have an opportunity to pinch those players but unfortunately he's taken just a little bit too long and the spawns now out the back will continue for fear ferox nice couple of kills Mebo. though for mebo and his teammate grabs the third so 25 seconds worth of time is a sizable chunk here but this man on the screen is going to look to try and form the potential upset of just nicking a little bit of scrap time matty just lurking and actually no it decides better of it yeah it's going to be Mr. Cole, 12 and 9 right now, who's been frying in this. It is going to be a 60, make that a 50 second lead for the boys of Fear Ferox. So we get a setup on this more complex kind of bridge hill. It's very difficult to hold. There's a lot of points of entry, a lot of points of exit. And this is about whether you decide to hold it from bridge above or hold it from the boxes below and again you just got to watch for that flank behind because it is a short route through bar and then you're kind of in balcony above the hill so yeah marzi could have been oh. an overwatch position right there going to look to try and get some shots out and look to try and be that suppressive fire of matty from the point is oh. anyone going to stop him finally right and able to do it and that is going to see the boys another big challenge no one major with control of the hill just yet well They've got to try and butt their way through the front of it. It's not going to be ideal. But now look at Rice off the top. He's able to get one pick and he's able to keep his head down just for the time being. But now Matty's going to look to try and fly out Renetti in hand. And still 20 seconds remaining on this. And it's a big 20 seconds, actually, if you are V7. If they can just get Foggy firing a little bit more crispy, currently 3 and 13, it will look a hell of a lot better for them. It must be said Rice shots there to take down Dino. But again, Fear Ferox just close nearby for the trade. And again, it's another swift transition from... P4 or P5 into P1 in towards CAF. It will be Fear Ferox ready to go. And Matty on this heady is going to be the difficult one to shift. Yeah, and again, this is going to be the, the same setup they had before. They've got a lot of players out wide, but it's going to be Foggy. You talked about needing to get a big kill, manages to drop a player over. In fact, yeah, it was Foggy who got the kill, finally registers on the map. He is crazy, but he's managed to get himself a little bit further forward. So that just cuts off the middle portion of steps to those boys. Another yeah. big kill. I think he's heard you, Major, because they're two valuable kills. So the boys, if they can break the hill, this oh, could be absolutely mate. vital. 
Well, they've just team naded, so Matty stays alive behind the bar for a little bit longer. He's been on this time for what feels like an eternity. He's got two minutes of hill time, literally out of the two minutes and 20 seconds or two minutes and 36 seconds that the boys have got so far. So he's doing God's work on the point at the moment is Matty. And more importantly, his teammate there in Marzi on the right side of the map has managed to get himself five in a row. So this sixth kill is going to be all important because you do fear... But on this map, with how many open hills there are, Pabs, that streak is going to be so, so useful, especially out of some of those open hills. And there it is, six in a row for Marzi, 18 and 8. His boys are running away with it now. Yeah, you feel that if it does actually get down to that P5, being such an open hill, oh. that could be vital. It's whether it gets that far, 193 to 79. A lot of hill time to go between then and now. Does he even need the cruise? The way they're playing right now is just being so dominant. Illusion, though, manages to put Dino down. Rice manages to take Matty out. So a nice two-piece for V7. Get themselves two players onto the hill. And are they going to get this time so valuable to them as we see Fear Ferox Major push the 200 mark? Well... 100 point club. Oh, it's still looming a little bit. And oh, the raid from the Nocturne boys of 34. Thank you very much to the Nocturne lads. We love the Nocturne lads around here, don't we? But the yeah, boys are, oh, yes. The Nocturne boys. Jack's a, a devil. He's a, he's a sexy devil. Hide <laughs> your missus, Jack's about. But uh, Fear Ferox at the moment looking very, very yeah. good. It must be said. V7 save themselves a little bit of embarrassment. They aren't going to be clubbed, but it looks as though it's going to be pretty close to it. Matty still going on a tear in towards P1. He goes. Rice has been wigged as well. It's the same outcome for V7. Whenever they come across him, the reload comes through and you will anticipate the next shout is going to be lingering any second now. So 35 seconds remaining for V7 to try and keep their hopes alive in this. Foggy tries to lay prone. Pump police question mark. How many are we going to see here? He is going to just lay prone, <laughs> at least for now. But Matty's doing the patient work, running the route around the back, and he might grab all of them here. One for Matty, two for Matty. Is the third going to be ready and waiting in the form of Rice AR in hand? Not the third, but his teammates are getting a huge chunk of time to show for it now, Pabs, and they are on the precipice of getting this done. Yeah, absolutely. Just really 25, 24 seconds needs. But again, they're going to make it a bit mixy, Foggy and Mebo Rotating, with two big bro. kills are going to get on there. And you can see the transition just happening straight away with five seconds to go. It is going to be the boys of Fear Ferox who get that preferred spawn almost on top. And number seven there, Matty pushes straight out to get some information. Oof. Going to get a pick. Is he going to get the second one? No, it is going to be Illusion who manages to deal with them. But both those players now on the hill, it is going to be believe i can't see because it's black on it's black on black right now fear <laughs> ferox are uh, just sat there but it is going to be a big kill as we see mebo get onto that point oh. but major they've got to play so much perfect hard point to get this even to a competitive game they've got to try and keep an eye on this man here though matty oh did he get the information that that man has dropped just below him the nade's going to give him that information surely oh he's been stunned though not ideal for Matty. Checks the corner, flies round Foggy. The first outcome is going to be him dying, but it will still be V7 on the point. But they've got to have such a perfect game now. And we're going to see that streak invested. It's not going to combine with anything. It's going to force them off the point temporarily. So they've milked the streak. But now Foggy, he's had such a rough map so far. But now he's got to go absolutely huge on the new hill. Yeah, I don't know whether the player, there's a player above him. I don't even realise that I think they know where he is. So this is a big opportunity and a solid chunk of time. You know, if they Ooh, if they get kill. themselves a full hill, hill here, this could be absolutely exciting. Are they about to turn this game around or is there too much, too Ooh, many cruises going out as illusion? Puts Cola, that's going to be three down. This is going to be a solid amount of time. You can see Rice already pushing out to try and make sure that no one gets that flank behind. So big opportunity. He's just got to read this correctly at that uh -oh. time and is not there. Uh -oh. A major. 3-4 for V7 oh, Esports. Four go down. And somebody's got to get on to try and contest this. Look at Cole. He's going to try and make a bit of a pinch onto who remains on the side of V7 to try and cause this upset. Four seconds. Somebody's got to get on. It looks as though Dino's going to be the man in charge of soaking up the time. They're flying desperately towards it, but it's not going to be enough. <laughs> Fear Ferox will take it on the Vista Hardpoint, and they will take the series. Yep, incredible plays really towards those latter three maps. Incredible performance. We saw the really, really hyper competitive map one that ended 250 to 236 in favor of V7. And then we see, in fact, it was a 236, yeah, 250, 236. And then we see, you know, kind of what we expected in the SD major, which was a huge 6 2. And we knew that was coming, but then an absolutely impact 
impeccable performance yep. on control. There probably is a, a great one to go back over to, uh, in terms of VOD if you are for your Ferox, just to show how well you did it and one back to the lab for V7. If we're a pickup side, but going into Vista, we felt like this was an opportunity where they might be able to throw the cat among the pigeons and potentially cause an upset. Well, unfortunately, not for Ferox looked very strong from the outset. And, you know, if you're going to pick an MVP across all those maps, Matty at times just yeah. looked unplayable. Yeah, he did look very, very good. To be fair, across the board, um, they had some very, very good performances, it must be said. You had the likes of Colt, can't sleep on him. He had a good map, 28 and 23 in the end. Uh, Marzi as well, 25 and 16. But yeah, Matty with a huge chunk of time. He got 2 minutes 30 on the hill in the end of that one. So a shout out to him. Really good work from him and his boys. And they will take that series win. But one thing we spoke about, Pabs, before the, uh, before the series actually started was um, whoever finishes second in this group comes up against... Uh, Good segue actually into Jack with the raid in Nocturne. So yeah, they've uh, they've had a really good series there, but unfortunately now they're going to come right up against the juggernaut of, uh, of EU challengers. Yeah, that's that's not going to be a fun game. We were having a conversation prior to the game starting about who we thought the, the teams that are likely to be in kind of final contention, and obviously Nocturne definitely being one. We know that the. Uh, the boys of of uh, Vega, um, Zappy and Cold Cruel are going to be in a, potentially in a in a fight for that as well. There was another side as well. I totally can't remember who the, the team were now off the top of my head. I remember picking the wrong side. Revived was it maybe? Um, yeah, revived is uh, BB Connor's team. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's three teams there potentially, and um, who could you know be be vying for that? But knocked them have got to be the favourite, and anyone who's going to come up against them have got to come up against. You know, some really smart players, but some incredible slayers as well. And that's just, you don't want to be doing that. And again, <laughs> for me, Fear Ferox, they look really good against this pickup side, but you take that hard point and yep. there's not going to be any quarter given by any three of those sides. If they come, and especially knock them when they come up against them, it's going to be a different level of playing. Yeah. Well, uh, that is one series done. Group D has now finished and it will end up with the boys of 22 esports i do believe have um have played their other game i will double check but fear ferox looks as though they're going to secure themselves in towards that second place spot hammer esports i would assume finished third and then v7 unfortunately finished fourth but they don't get knocked out just yet it just means that they will start in the losers bracket but what we'll do guys because we do have another game coming up very very shortly just after this one we've got mistaken esports up against elmets on tour so we'll throw it to a quick break guys and when we come back we will have that group c fixture on your screen
Ladies and gents, welcome back. We're here with game number two, Mistaken Esports up against Elmitz on tour. The guys aren't messing around, Pabs. We're jumping into the map very, very shortly, but we will give a quick overview of the team. So Mistaken consisting of Wadey, Beat, Astro and Euphoria and Elmitz, Luto, B. Shawnee, Crybaby and the Cookie Monster in uh, oh, Enrico, who is going to be filling it. He's going to hate us for that, but we have to do it every time we've got him now, mate. So uh, yeah, another, another bit of a... Uh, pick up supreme uh for, for elmitz because it's basically luto plus three all the time um from what i've been told so it's going to be a uh, an interesting one for for those lads going into it um so yeah another game perhaps where we just go right let's just watch the cod and enjoy it really it's a i guess mistake. They've always got good sides they're like vitality used to be they never really mm. have a, a terrible side so i'm expecting good things from them and i'll be honest i'm expecting rico to totally shit the bed because he was playing fifa all night last night with trey so <laughs> I just you know i don't know what to expect from it but rico's a shooter although we did notice that you're you seem to be more of a shooter than rico so we're i don't know <laughs> we're not what to pick up, but yeah this should be really interesting helmets obviously again in that pick up position luto gonna start things nice and Crybaby going to be there as well. It looks like Beats decided to go for a swim as he makes his way right the way round to just provide a little bit of a surprise. Potentially coming up ramp, but more than likely trying to sort those spawns out. P2, yeah. as we do see a large chunk of time major go in the way of helmets, but P2 is where the battleground is likely to really ensue. Yeah, I was going to say that I'm surprised how much time that they've decided to give helmets on this P1 because it doesn't really matter how well you hold the P2 if the other team holds the entirety of P1. You're basically back to evens again. So we'll have to see how this one goes. It looks as though there is going to be a little bit of scrap time on the card for them. Number five, Enrico, is just waiting for anyone out the back here. I'm not quite sure what Rico's watching, to be honest. I think he, because he did say he's literally just got out of bed. So I think he is still half asleep because there's <laughs> nobody currently out there, but the spawns are going to be close. Luto going to cross over. There's one and a second. No, the trade from Rico will be good. So he is going to be the man out towards the back of the hill, but there is going to be a spawn in favour of the mistaken lads. Number one in Euphoria is going to be very euphoric about that spawn because his team now have the back. Yeah, Rico with some windy shots. Give the man his judo, he does a hard job. So it's <laughs> fair play to him for, for dragging himself out on a, maybe a day off. But yeah, this has been a bit back and forth. The time has kind of stagnated a little bit as P2 has become the battleground. We normally see the P1 and this is largely due to the fact that Mistaken kind of gave up so much time over towards that P1. But we can start to see the, the team that have played and stayed together start to just equal chip away at that lead. And it's going to be B2 gets dealt with by Luto and Cryer Baby as well so both those players teaming up one more time to put the pressure back onto the team in red but mistaken yet to be budge major from this p2 as the game is about to be tied up they're going to have a slender lead going into p3 which can be a tricky one to break in so many ways and obviously you've got to make sure that no one pushes around the back and no one pushes top ac yeah well uh, astro he falls and now Helmets on the time on towards P3. B is just waiting for anyone who's potentially going to chal onto him. You can see that Shawnee number eight actually is all the way over towards that AC side of the map. And just so Euphoria is going to have to be the man to deal with him. But meanwhile, B is trying to play his life here. But Crybaby out the back. The nade's going to land right in his back pocket. And Helmets now in the driving seat on the P3. A huge chunk of time is able to be had here if they can manage to keep everyone alive on the point. And it looks as though those red arrows have completely chalked it off, Babs. Yeah, there's not even going to be a challenge. I think number two is having, I think, Wadey's, you know, seven and five right now, the kill leader for Mistaken is having a, a quiet moment of, uh, of of pause for thought as he kind of makes his way, just largely looks like he's going to try and protect that push around P2. So that's going to be a solid chunk of time for Elmer to just gifted. And, and Major, this is a, what do you know, if the boys in purple break this hill, then it's going to be another hill that the boys are mistaken of chalk. So big moment for them. They're going to need some solid time on this p4 well euphoria is waiting for those players pushing through bottom server but they're just going to go straight through that side door so they're not actually going to come across any of the players wadey's able to pick off one over towards that p2 side and now it looks as though euphoria is going to get engagements he's only going to be able to win one of them though as the trade from crybaby comes through and nice shots from wadey who now finds himself five in a row oh, can't quite snap on towards Luto. Oh, boy, that was an SMG, by the way, that Luto just fried him with. I want to pick this gun up. Holy, he's absolutely beamed him from that distance. I was assuming I'd see an MCW in the uh, in the kill feed, but it wasn't. So clean shots there from Luto and his team now looking to try and maybe get what remains of a little bit of scrap time. Nope, looks as though the next hill will be a little bit of a one versus one here with Euphoria up against Luto. 
Yeah, I don't know whether Euphoria has realised the player. It's just going to be down low towards that back part of P5, but it is going to be Euphoria who gets the pick. So comms are going to go out, and it's going to be the boys in red going to have an opportunity to just get a little bit of time as those purple arrows didn't chalk really P4 in any kind of way at all. They just still managed to, to look like they, they were over there. Number seven, you can see in, in Crybaby, is still slowly but surely making his Ooh. way across the top to see if he can get eyes on. But he's going to need control of that P2. Otherwise, this is going to be absolutely horrible for Elmer to and now on the receiving end of a, of a potential 30-second deficit. A mistaken slowly but surely starting to creep into control of this sub-base hard point. We're saying that. Oh, no, maybe not. I was going to say Luto was back on the time, but beating towards the top here. Nice shots there to get Rico as well. I thought he would surely get traded out there, but he's not. And now Beat finds himself fought in a row, slowly edging his way towards that infamous sixth streak. And now he knows that Luto is here. He's not going to get it. Yeah, he is actually five in a row now for Beat. So now we'll stand with him to see if he can get that all-important sixth kill. God, blimey, this analog stick is jiggly as fuck. It's going absolutely everywhere. As there's going to be three players beneath them. Shots aren't going to be clean enough, though. No sixth kill, Pab's an important one. Mistaken, though, in the driving seat. Yeah, Astro just going to be sit as the hill kitten right now. 4-9 with a solid 1-10. So giving themselves a, a really tasty 60-second lead. And Major, that kill feed does go purple, though. So a good opportunity to get Mixie for Elmets as they're going to get back onto this P1 at the start of the second rotation and get themselves a handful of time. If they can get the full 35 seconds, it's going to bring them within touching distance of Mistaken. But again, they're going to need to then deal with the P2, which was Mixie in the first rotation. But that's whether they can get control. Beats looking solid though he's managed to get to 12 and 8 he's back on a two streak and the boys are mistaken just going to eke that lead out even further with a solid 16 seconds of scrap time oh, i'd love to know what sense b is on because his aim is jiggery pokery left right and center at the moment but he's managing to get the kills regardless shawnee though holding strong on that high ground is able to get one pick and now a very important p2 hold is going to be needed here for elmitz wadey up towards the top plat area is he going to spot Rico in towards ramp? Yes, he is. So there's one for Wade. There's a second for Wadey as well. And can't quite get any more, though. They've still got Shawnee, who's staying alive on the time. But unless they can get a huge bag of kills here, Shawnee shuts down one. But you've still got Euphoria in towards the hilt. And Elmitz are still lurking around it, but they've not got a huge amount of time from this P2, the Purple Arrows, yet, perhaps. Yeah, this has been a problem for them. Rico is playing like he's just got out of bed. 12 seconds, 6 and 16. He's approaching triple negative not the performance he likes to portray but again he is a slow starter so expect him to pick up some kills towards the latter parts of this hard point but at 174 we are approaching that kind of goldilocks zone where the boys are mistaken aren't going to need to dominate as much as they have been doing in order to see this over the line with both wadey and astro providing a solid two minutes 60 of time mistaken looking very very tidy so far and again those blue arrows chalking out that previous p3 and they're going to just be there ready and waiting sorry on p3 to get those picks but information going to go down no one transitioning yet to try and protect that back though surely they're going to start to move around and make sure that they don't get picked off from behind giving up those spawns as well so again really really weird plays coming out of helmets yeah well they're now trailing by 70 and this hill is still going to be so so important to them cry baby guy? falls <laughs> yeah luto unfortunately there Falls straight into the bullets. There is going to be a spawn out the back for uh, for Crybaby here. So will Euphoria make the reads? There's another kill for him. Looks as though Luto surely going to make the chow any second with the call that he was indeed weak. And now Rico has got a lot of work on his hand. But Wade, he just makes the read in towards that top plat area. He's able to get that pick. And now Elmets are really, really struggling. They've not got the rotation to new. Mistaken are locked in. These next kills are going to be so, so important. The next kills in transition might make or break this map for Elmets now. As Wadey heads over towards the P5 area, spots Crybaby. That's a big opening gunfight, which he's able to win. Euphoria's just holding his shots before he spots Rico. But the shots are a oh, little bit windy. Big. So now the first wave of gunfights comes through. They need to win the second, though. Will they hold strong? Af Astro inside the hilt. And it will be beat, meanwhile, over towards this backside of the submarine that tries to stay alive. But look at the swarm of those purple arrows, Pabs. They are well and truly in now. Yeah, this is going to be a big fight. Close score to go and fight, but the backup is going to be there from the AR to take those players down. But Velvets have done well to make this more of a challenged hill. They've got the spawns, but probably at the wrong time for them as the boys 
in, mistaken, managed to get a little bit of time, pushed themselves over the 200 mark, and now they're set up for get warehouse control and get some sights down towards that P2 window as they look to get control of P5 at the end of this second rotation. 217 to 147 is looking very, very good for the boys of mistaken so far with Astro 9 and 14, but with a solid 160. And Rico needs to lay off the cookies. He's on the struggle bus right now, 11 and 19. Joined unadmirably by his mucker in Sean. He's 12 and 18 as well, but a solid 122 on the clock. Yeah, well, euphoria. This is going to be the last break, probably, that those Purple Arrows have got. And a huge set of kills from Crybaby, who now finds himself three Ooh. in a row. 25 and 16. He's kind of the beating drum at the moment for Elmitz. And his team need to try and pick it up a little bit more. But there's going to be a lot of Red Arrows now heading all the way around towards the Some next time, side huh? yeah, they are soaking up yeah a large chunk of time it must be said crybaby on the hill they've got to try and take him down it looks as though top snow is going to be the decision from those players and meanwhile in towards mid wade he's able to win a gunfight but now can they change the angles onto crybaby still alive on the hill alongside shawnee they cannot seem to shift him as meanwhile astro is going to work himself through bottom warehouse but the time has just completely gone missing pabs that push took so long to form that they've pretty much got a full hill uncontested yeah, this is going to be an important kill right there. Number one in Euphoria, dropping six in Luto as he made his way to get an overwatch position on the third rotation, P1. And that's going to be huge right there for the boys of Mistaken. But we're going to see a big set of gunfights go down. This is usually the point where Rico's Ooh. gun has started to get warmed up. So expect to see him just get a couple Gotta more picks. On. Combine them for 10 right now. Crybaby with the cruise. This could be huge moments right now for Elmets Mistaken. They're going to be under pressure, especially if the boys of Elmets can get a ton of time. And they, again, they need to get set up for P2 because that cruise could be absolutely useless in that enclosed hill. Well, Crybaby, he's got a lot of bodies to try and get through here. There's a lot of them swarming around the poor man in the hill. Shawnee only grabs one. He goes down. Big one on one. Luto's able to win his ones. Can he win a second as well? Whoa! He does. And it now leaves Rico, lost man alive on the hill upside Astro. And he does manage to get that pick as well. So Elvis somehow stay alive. But there's only five seconds. And I think Crybaby's invested the streets. They've got to get the man off the time. They do manage to do it. And they do manage to get ready for P2. Oh, this is insane, plays Elmets right on the precipice of going 1-0 down in the series. Two seconds needed for Mistaken. They can't get onto the hill. Number five, Enrico is going to be watching down across that P5 tank, looking to provide some pressure fire. Oh, he gets windy. the shots, but he's not able to get the picks, and it's going to be a push coming down. Oh, no. He's going to get taken down. That's going to be two fallen for Elmets Mistaken, pushing through onto the hill, and again, they're going to be relying on Luto and Cryobaby to try and take these down with the Renetti. Luto might get him oh. again. He gets it's a fight oh! down the post and it's going to be Luto on a killing spree. 20 seconds required, 26 on the clock. They've got to get in. They've got to get <laughs> in. Mistaken. Where does your push come from? Luto still alive in the hill. Can he do something extraordinary? No, he can't. Rico goes down and that's all it takes. One clean break. Mistaken will take that map. I'll tell you what, though. They made it very, very close to the Elmitz lads. It looked as though it was all going to completely capitulate. But then eventually the boys in red do get it over the line. But only just about. Well, mate, I just, you know, I, well, I'm, I can't even speak. I was about to die, Jordan. That, that post kerfuffle as the uh, the two strippers just dancing around the pole trying to get the, uh, the most amount of how we got that kill. But, <laughs> it's insane. Muto on the five. Tries the heroics. Crybaby dropping a 30 for the L as well. Unfortunate plays for those boys. And they made a game of it towards the end. You've got to say mistaken. Just largely letting that just ride a little bit. Chalk and win. One too many hills. Making it super difficult. But what a game of hard point between these two teams well there you go confirmation of it sub base will result in a mistaken esports dub and 250 241 it's a scoreline that didn't look like it was going to form at any <laughs> any kind of mid portion of that map it looked as though it was going to at least be a 60 70 point drumming especially in that middle portion but the boys from elmitz unfortunately even off the back of that p5 just gave themselves just a little bit too much to do and it will mean that the boys in red will now take the lead. But yeah, obviously, a, a player perhaps that they're obviously integrating very last minute, fresh out of bed. Uh, Krusty's in the eyes in, in Rico. Obviously, had a little bit of a struggle there in that map. But when he got going, that's when his team got a huge chunk of time to show for it. So you do fear that potentially 
unless Rico can really kind of keep up to speed throughout the whole series, they, he might be that man that they kind of lean to to really uh, be a bit of an X factor in the team. It looks as though Crybaby is not lacking any slaying ability on the roster. And 20, yeah, and we know what Luto's got as well. So we've yeah. there's a lot of ability in this Elmitz team. It's just a case of trying to form it last second, essentially. And I think the thing as well is that you, Crybaby doing really well. Rico does start slow. We saw that in your games in the in the copy cup he starts really slow and then as his gunny picks up he does start to dominate the map but yep. i'm not sure they're going to be able to, to keep up wade he dropped 31 and 26 with 20 non-traded euphoria 29 and 21 in the slaying department mistaken don't look like they're on the struggle bus at all so and some of the time coming out of the boys so although beating astro with 19 and 21 and 12 and 20 respectively they top for 254 in time so you know they they look well-rounded strategically this is going be tough for helmets they're gonna to have to do something very very big s d is that place where you can kind of level the playing field and in particular high rise s d which is horrible well beat gets first blood wow it's a very quick opening start to this map crybaby's gonna grab a couple of kills the trade though is gonna be instant and all of a sudden shawnee finds himself very much alone after the first 25 <laughs> seconds of the search and destroy so one versus two required here for shawnee no information of those players' whereabouts up close. Euphoria spots him, though, and he does manage to get the wall bang through. So, mistaken, going to take the first round. Yeah, I think he uh, got a little excited. Top propane there. Just gets the shots over to Heli when he really didn't need to do that. He could have just played that a little bit more strategically. And it's going to be nice shots there as Euphoria gets the penetration. And it's going to be 1 0 to the boys. And we said this, you know, a team that have played together on a map that has been as a rotation as long as this should realistically do really well. Um, again, we talk about X Factors. And there is a couple of players in helmets that could potentially change this. But it's got to be a mistaken win. Like, they have to win in this S&D um, just you know on the back of the fact that they've been playing together for much longer than this element side yeah well Euphoria gets a couple of shots in doesn't finalise the kill though oh sorry Rico apologies There's, uh, it was Euphoria but look at these two players they're just going to go straight through bottom mid here look at them go Luto though is able to sniff out one and they know that number four here in Astro is very very trapped underground so He's going to need a little bit of help. Is it going to come in the form of Wade, who's able to fly oh, out? And I'll tell you what, Luto absolutely beams him. Tell you what, the SMG in this man's hand looks mighty clean, it must be said. And now, with the bomb in hand, is able to get it down. Astro now finds himself in a one versus four. And with the sub in his hand, which he might want to reload, because there's a lot of players and only 18 bullets left in the mag, it's not looking very good for him here. Yeah, I think uh, this is going to be a tricky one. He's going to get red whatever angle he decides to go. If he pushes out bottom, there's a player waiting. If he pushes through top, there's players waiting. So this is going to be tricky for him. The shots go out. At this point, normally, you would just yeet yourself off the map and just save everyone the hassle. But it's going to be a free kill right there. Now, I'm going to get themselves onto the board. Nice plays on that attacking round. A couple of big kills, though. That Raji went down to extreme gun skill. Yeah, well... The man who has to consistently play with three pickups, leading the charge in Luto. Currently three and one, and the first round on the board for his team. So just stopping that mistaken momentum for the time being. But we are now going into round number three, and it will be mistaken back on the attack. So let's have a look and see what they decide to try and do. Obviously, a difficult map, perhaps, to try and get the bomb down, to be honest, with all the explosive ordnance around you. So it's usually a case of you get kind of these passive openings uh, after like an explosive set of nades and, and stuns kicking off. But first blood, Euphoria is able to get that first one and Elmit's not going to want to keep consistently giving away first picks. Oof. Yeah, I'm so confused as well. Big plays though. Crybaby does get dealt with. It's going to be two fall and that's going to make Luto in a 1v3. He's kind of in this horrid mid map section as well. So you do feel like he's going to get red at some point. Information is going Ooh. to go out and all oh, the shots go all around his bum hole as he tries to escape. He's done quite well to, to, to play his life so far. He'll do well to get a pick as well, potentially putting a little bit of uh, psychology in the minds of Mistaken, but Bomb is going to be planted and it is going to be the boys of Mistaken with the advantage. Oh, Luto has been spotted and Luto will be bagged. So not really a huge amount he could do there. Perhaps obviously his hand was forced when the bomb got planted and yeah, with three players a lot of which had ARs. Uh, it was going to be one where he would need something very, very uh, majestic to uh, to take that round. But mistaken, looking very, very good on the offense, Pabs. I just don't get, like, I know Elmer to the pickup side, but you've got players consistently and mistaken getting to Heli 
get into top heli quickly, why why are you playing open positions towards that kind of like front of spawn and getting taken down so quickly? It, it, you've got to play a little bit smarter than that, otherwise you are going to give away a, a cheap first blood, and that's exactly what's happened. The game's still a little bit closer than I think Mistaken would like, and again, it is going to be down to... The first blood you feel, helmet to get it, it's going to be fine, and again, it's going to be shots coming out from beat and elevator. Crybaby does get that first blood major, and two down for Mistaken. It's looking like a very attack heavy S&D in this game. Well, beat, another pick. Can he oh, get some my, more? I literally have sweaty palms when he did that. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's like anxiety inducing, isn't it? <laughs> so, Wadey now finds himself needing the one versus three, grabs the first pick. So the first he's part doing is this, done. You know, I think he's going to do this. He's only got 20 seconds left, though, and he's got to get the next kill quickly. Nope. And you jinxed him, Pabs. Yes, one, jo one job. <laughs> I'm just trying to get Rico win. Sorry, he's, he's paid me off with cookies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's going to be too old. Where's, my, where's, I, my, where's I'll my send cookies? Them, I'll send them. Oh, okay. Are they cream egg ones or no? Yeah, of course. The cream egg ones. Cream egg cookies. I think you. That was that. That's going to be like your Elvis moment. You're going to die on the toilet eating cream, fried cream egg cookies. I'd die a happy man, to be honest, if that was how I went. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it will be. Uh, Elmets tying it back up. So a little bit of back and forth, Pabs. Obviously, no team's currently flying away with it. It just looks as though the offensive team seem to have the upper hand, which is weird in the, in the high rise. Yeah, I think, again, it just it shows you just once you start getting deep into the season, how dynamics and strategies can change. And it's going to be shots going down. Be long. Beat and not able to get a pick, though, and no first blood as of yet. But plenty of bullets have been fired already be just looking for that push out towards the side as they play cat and mouse almost in synchronicity there that was quite impressive but we can see the player that is my life just seeing the players bum all going around the corner <laughs> but again no first blood major as we have 50 seconds so yeah itchy trigger finger here for beat he's uh looking to see if there's a potential free pick maybe onto rico in this close right corner gets himself in towards elevator but nothing as of yet and the bomb still in the hands of Astro is still yet to be planted. So where's that first pick going to lie? He's still waiting here in Elevator for someone to channel out onto him. His beat. Oh, and Rico throws the shoulder. So the information's there. Both players are a little bit trapped here. But now here come the reinforcements. Luto being one of which. Nadin forces a man out. Who's got the swifter trades? Beats able to get one. And so too will Wadey. So now it's going to be a two versus three. Crybaby's on the point though. He's able he to pick off one. Kill. There's still going to be another man. He's able to drop down off the back of it though. And beat now with the bomb in hand. Needs to try and plant it. Only 13 seconds left. Makes the read though. And able to take down Crybaby. The bomb will go down. No, it won't actually. Because his teammate gets the kill. And mistake and take the round. There we go, 3-2 again. This is probably a little bit too close to comfort for the boys are mistaken, but back and forth with no real control, and it comes down to a little bit of a kill over towards this spawn area. Euphoria 4 and 3 right now. And again, mistaken just about in control, but at times the, the mixiness and some of the gun skill coming out of the boys of Helmet is just proven a little bit too much. Rico is going to be on 3 and 4 right now. Again, guys, the... Uh, the, the the kill the kill counter the stats are just completely screwed so do look at the uh the kd towards the uh the lower portion of the screen again rico does kind of like stay with these slow starts expect them at some point to start to potentially get a few more picks with that ar but rico is going to be the player just watching be long no players there wadey just in that position waiting for a push over towards that tower area and beat with that again consistent ar over there bomb finally does go down this is going to be a massive Ooh. retake and it's not going to be easy for mistaken major as euphoria goes into the next round or oh, astro gets a couple of shots into rico he doesn't have a trophy to keep him alive on that top propane either so these next picks are going to be so so important but now beat over towards heli steps he's not going to find anything in top heli he is going to spot Shawnee, though, who's going to be a free pick for him. And Astro grabs one onto Rico as well. But now Crybaby down underneath him. Is he going to manage to spoon him around and get the pick? No, he's not. So now Beat versus Luto. One versus one. Who's going to spot who first? He's going to go up onto the high ground. He's Doesn't see him. anything. He's and there's only going to be a few him. seconds. And Luto clutches up. And Elmets take the round. Elmets with a, a nice win in the end. It does come down to a little bit of luck as Luto doesn't get spotted out towards bottom. Oil, and it's going to be an easy pick in the end for him. He's 5-3 and three right now, and this is going to tie things up again. 3 all we starting to get the waft of around 11 as this ping-pongs back and forth in favour of the attacking sides. Can someone break the enigma, the puzzle that is the defensive hold right now? Again, 6-4, and four, Rico had a good round beat. In fact, 6-4, and four, a decent round. Been playing very, very well. Has been 
quite suppressive with that AR, particularly over towards this B long. Expect some very quick shots to go out as soon as he gets sight. Astro with the bomb, and it is going to be a little bit of geography taken forward by Beat as he gets top propane. Yeah, important information here. If he can just shoulder and find some, they know that Rico's out here. It's a very wide peak from Wico. Wico? Wico. <laughs> J J JN Wico. <laughs> it's a Jonathan Wass style casting. <laughs> There's a, it will now be Shawnee last man up. And this is a very, very convincing round from Mistaken. And uh, it's a win there for Mistaken and not for Mr. Wico. Wait, is, Re is he Reek from Game of Thrones? No, that would be that would be terrible. Um, but yeah, it is going to be... Uh, Rico goes into the blender early doors. You very with a big kill. It was actually quite a quick round in the end. Mistaken just dominating that portion of the map and just managing to get the picks and again it is going to just see them with an attack and round win take this up to 4-3 Major are we going to see this ping pong back and forth to around 11 right now no one really with a solid defensive strategy no counter as of yet we're seeing a lot of the same kind of movement of players very you know consistent in how they're going to the same positions top heli someone watching B long are we going to see at any point a, a, a new strategy and mix things up well, Rico's been forced off the high ground almost instantly over towards that side. Euphoria is able to get a pick, but Crybaby does exactly the same as well. So they find themselves in a tied situation. Three plays three. Now, Shawnee, there's one pick. Are the trades going to come through? Rico's, no, he's not going to get it. Wade is able to grab a huge two-piece, which now leaves Crybaby in the one versus two. And the oh. shots aren't going to be good enough. And that might be... The round that breaks the mold. Mistaken 5-3 up now. Two round advantage. And now on the side where they haven't lost a round. Pabs looking good for the 6-3. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I um, mean, if you're a better man, this is exactly how it would go. It was a really nice read as well. Both of them stacked towards that A point. A nice control over towards blue. So, mistaken. We said they should take this, but they have made this very, very difficult for themselves. But again, Elmets, if they're able to do exactly the same and break this defensive deadlock for themselves, are going to be back within one round. But again, you know, as a betting man, you've got to say mistaken now in the driving seat. And it is going to be Wady and I believe be just pushing over towards this B long area where they've been so successful all game. Well, Rico on the left side of the map there, you can see he's taken that wide angle and he's able to pick off one player for it. And now Rico still lurking with Beat just directly under him. Again, he's in this elevated position that he was in last time. Played it very, very slowly. Didn't want to give anything. The only reason last time he flew out was because the nade landed right in his back pocket and forced him out of position. So Euphoria just jump checking to see if any form of information can be given here. It looks as though there's going to be a little it. bit of a standoff here. Luto, though, the shot's trailing onto him. Beat has managed to push himself up him towards this second elevator as well. So... Next kill going to be the all-important one here. Can mistaken get the next one? No, he can't. He flies straight out into the open. Luke, Luto and Rico cut them both down, and it will be Euphoria left for the one versus four. Yeah, 29 seconds on the clock is not going to be easy for him. He finally gets taken down. Elmet strikes straight back with a solid defensive round. So it does look like that mystery has been, the puzzle has been solved. But now it's just down to who can hold their nerve. Again, just one round needed for the boys a mistaken identity. But the tails in the air for the team in purple. But again, very similar to the hard point. Very close to until the very end when mistaken were able to just about see it over the line. But again, Elmet, you know, he just you think you're going to write them off and they're able to bring it back but this is going to be a huge round for them they've done well again themselves on their attacking rounds only one they haven't been able to 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 win so this is a big opportunity for them and can they tie this and are we going to see that round 11 yeah well two players have gone oh sorry one player's going towards bottom blue that's Shawnee a big first big. blood from Shawnee down to three as Luto does the most outrageous dolphin dive straight over towards that side. He's got a man in towards top heli right next to him as well. And Luto picks him off. So round 11, the waft is absolutely honking now because it's going to be down to Wadey and Beat in the two versus four. Luto has been spotted over towards the top. And unfortunately, Beat is just watching over towards the backside of his spawn where he's going to find absolutely nothing. So bomb now going down. Oh, Beat tagged up. So, so weak. He's going to need some help here from his teammate in Wadey, but he will fall. And now Beat needs to try and work the one versus four. Players absolutely everywhere, it seems. And number five in Rico is coming straight around the back of him. Oh, no. Rico doesn't fully check out towards that window. So 27 seconds left. And you do fear as though it is pretty much inevitable. Luto spots him. And surely the comp that he is Juan shot. Well, it's not going to be any good now because he's just regen. But 
Spots Rico. Pump police. We'll be checking this one. Up, down, up, down. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> and eventually his body does fall down. So Elmis take the round. Round 11. We smelled it. We could sense it coming. We thought it might happen when mistaken we were able to break that uh, defensive puzzle, but it, it is going to be around 11 and really nice plays. Rico 7 and 7. We start to heat up as the series goes on. And this has got to be a worry for mistaken now, especially if they do lose this SD as these players start to get heated up. Control is a perfect environment for a pickup team to do really well. So. Elmet's on the front foot. Rico on a four streak. They're combining four or seven streak right now. Mistaken. They have gonna have got bomb. This is gonna be their attacking round. So you would say advantage is with them. But again, who is gonna get first blood major? Well, be straight through the smoke. Maybe not. Shawnee's got the first Sad blood the again. Battle. But Astro's got himself up in towards this little crack shack area, as we like to call it. Now look at Wadey, able to take down one. That's a really big pick onto Rico, who's looking to try and pinch onto those players on towards the site. So he's going to be holding the backside over towards bottom blue. And Beat just waiting for the right time before planting this bomb. Luto lurking over towards that back building. And with 50 seconds left, they do have to try and make the play here. And this is really bold here from Beat with the bomb in hand. You don't really want to be pushing into the spawn. He's going to fly around the corner. Luto spots him, but the team shots actually come through as Astro is able to pick him off. Crybaby grabs one back and now two versus two. Right, baby and Shawnee up against beaten Astro to see whether this is going to get tied up or whether Mistaken are going to go 2-0 with 28 seconds on the clock. It's not a great deal of time. And whether the boys realise oh. someone there, that's a huge kill on Shawnee. His beat's going to give the advantage to Mistaken, but the chase is on. I think he's seen them. This is going to be all she wrote. Mistaken are going to take it and they are going to be 2-0 up in what was one of the more interesting games of S&D. Around 11 victory ice in the veins. Yeah, big two-piece from beat right at the end as well. Well, you'll see it here. Just jumps up, sees the backside of Crybaby. And unfortunately for the boys of Elmitz, they pushed it right out to the wire, but they weren't able to get it over the line. And in beautiful Codcaster fashion, the stats are lying to you. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what the confirmed ones are, mate. But yeah, two maps. We've had a 250-241 and now a 6-5. So these guys, there's not really much separating them, to be honest. Yeah, it was a, a really good performance from both sides. Again, we got to four all, and no one had really been able to take. No one had been able to take a defensive round at all. And then it mistaken breaks the enigma, and then it, we just felt that back and forth. The ping pong happened, and we get to that final round. Mistaken hold their nerve once more in what has been an incredibly tight affair. Two fifty to two four one ends on a P two third rotation high rise 6-5 incredible performance out of both sides seem so evenly matched and now we go into an invasion control which is is just anyone's guess just really what can happen if you can get that a zone done in in any kind of quick fashion you can just throw the cat among the pigeons so elmer's probably looking for that element of surprise and you know utilizing some of this heavy ar presence that they have got to try and get control but we'll see yeah. how it goes and and, you know, whether they can get a map on the board or this could be the closest 3-0 that we've done in a while. Yeah, well, um, shout out to, uh, to Ben who's sorted us out with some stats. So we can see here that this is currently third versus fourth in the group. And uh, surprising the uh, the map count here from Mistaken because they're coming up against a uh, an Elmitz team who are by no means a pushover here in Group C. They are currently struggling in terms of KD. But again, I believe both teams are pretty much um, pick up rosters, but really good work. From uh, from mistaken so far, it would feel unjust, Pabs, after the first two maps that we've had, to uh, have it as a uh, <laughs> a three zero because it it doesn't feel like a three zero. This feels like it's a series that's got a game five in it. It's just a case yeah. of trying to yeah. <laughs> trying to unlock it and helmets to try and form uh, a potential bit of a comeback here because they're gonna if they're gonna take the series, they're gonna need a reverse sweep now. I this this is one of those maps where if you get 3 0 one of those series, you absolutely are fuming at the end of it yeah. because it's those tiny decisions that have just completely shaped the game. Those tiny mistakes that you've been punished for that normally you might be able to get away with against certain sides. And Elmets have just been punished time and time again and they just weren't able to see it. You know, you think about how much time mistaken gave up. They were 100 seconds ahead at one point and just over time just got absolutely fried. And it just made it that much more of a game. At some point, it did look like mistaken 
and we're going to control that map but it just you know they were, had to really work to turn it over and then you get to the s d where it was so camp and mouse at times and this largely comes down to the, the fact that the ars and helmets are just so strong and they were able to get some big picks so going into this control again you would say mistaken with the advantage but i, I just it, it it wouldn't surprise me if we're sat here in half an hour's time doing an s d yeah, I'm just uh, quickly screenshotting the stats for Benjamin. And uh, I do believe we are now lobbying up for map number three. So yeah, if you guys are just hopping on board with us here in this group game so far, it's been a pretty close affair. Mistaken, they find themselves 2 up, 250, 241, and a 6-5 in this one. Are we getting a fourth map, Pabs, do you think? Because uh, it just doesn't feel right if we don't, really. I'd, li I'd like to see Elm is on the ball with one. We need a big Jay and Rico cookie monster control. 30 kills from the big man and uh, and then a cheeky Karachi map four. Yeah, I think we they deserve one. I think for the amount of effort and the amount of you know game that they've given us, 6-5, 250 to 241, we they deserve a map four, at the very least an opportunity to take this series. But again, it doesn't matter what you deserve, it doesn't matter what your contribution's been so far, you're 2-0 down. You've got to take the map, otherwise you don't get that map four. And if mistake can take it, it's a 3-0. No one's gonna look back at the game and and see how close it was. They're just gonna see 3-0 and it's just gonna be, you know, the points on the board for mistake. And so down to helmets now to go big get their comms on point and try and just you know be aggressive well, i'll say the uh, the other two teams in this group for anyone who is wondering is uh, revived gaming who have finished three and oh unsurprisingly um and uh, team uk are currently sat in second at two and one so this is basically determining who's going to finish who uh, third and who's going to finish fourth here in group number c number c that's a new one for me isn't it number two um let us see should i say in that one but we are now loading in towards uh in towards the control guys so thank you very much for your patience and uh, we should be good to go for this one but yeah i mean mistaken pabs we'll be brutally honest we've not seen these lads play before um and they're coming up against a team of four who on paper i mean we know what shawnee can bring as well very very solid player um don't know who crybaby is i can't lie to you um but in terms of a team of four Taking maps off of these lads is not an easy feat to do, so they are definitely uh, one team not to be slept on. No, absolutely not. And Crybaby's been incredible. He's been put some big numbers up in the first map and had a solid performance again in map two. So, you know, someone definitely to look out for. You know, he's playing alongside Shawnee and Rico and Luto. So, definitely no pushover. But this is going to be difficult for, for the boys of Helmets. But right now, they've got themselves a four life lead. And Rico just putting people to the sword right now. And this is the kind of Rico you expect to see. There so we go. confident there is to Jay and Rico, we know and love. But yeah, this is going to be tricky for mistaken if helmet start firing on all cylinders like they can do it doesn't matter if they're a pickup side down mistaken go in the blender yeah well rico back into his ice cream he goes wade he looks to try and follow him and rico now finds himself four in a row and a lot of players in the open for him to pick from but it will be beat that just wraps around and he's able to take him out so They've looter. just eaten time, though, haven't they? Rico yeah. has just totally eaten their time. Yeah, that's the thing. When you've got a player pushed straight up in your spawn, you've got to allocate resources in terms of lives and then resources in terms of time, like you say, perhaps just to try and get rid of him because otherwise you're just going to chalk through so many lives, give the other team such an advantage. But it's just one of those where it's like it's a double-edged sword, really. You've got to kind of pick the lesser of the two evils. And unfortunately, the evils on the side of Elmitz are absolutely destroying them. Rico now 5-1. and one. Luto still yet to die as well. And a combined eight streak before Rico did subsequently fall has now resulted in a round where Mistaken have been absolutely bent over and sent to the cleaners. Yeah, this has been a bit of a dominant performance as we see the clock is going to put them into the next round. Elmitz with, with an absolutely stellar win there. But again, you know... They managed to get pushed up pretty early. They managed to put so much pressure onto this mistaken side, but the roles are going to be reversed, and we know how aggressive mistaken can be. Are they just going to do exactly the same thing? The question is, are they going to do it to such an, an elegant and, and accurate and, and ultimately destructive way? So, big moment right now. If mistaken can't fire back, this is this is potentially going to see us at a map four. Well, Astro at the moment is still waiting. How many did his, he? I don't think he, he hardly got any kills in the uh, in the S and D, did he? No, 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 he did. It's because the uh, the scores are glitched, perhaps. So uh, he did he did get a kill. if your team won six five, you didn't get a kill. You, you've done something very well, <laughs> and you've picked three teammates. Who are, yeah, very, very good. But at the moment, oh. the purple arrows are uh, proving to be a bit of an issue on the map. Euphoria, he's only got one kill to his name. Astro finally finds himself his first, but 
Shawnee just laying prone. Oh, Absolutely shot beams Euphoria. And now Luto and Shawnee combining for seven. So the last thing they're going to want to do, Pabs, even while gifting them the B point, is also give them a streak as well. Luto, five in a row now for him. And it's looking very, very good for Elmitz. B point done. A point now ready to go. Oh, that's a big kill to take him off. Yeah, he needed that really. Don't want to cruise because that would put them in the driving seat for that A zone. But they've still got to get themselves out of this as they're turtled up and Astros is going to be in a nice position. Nice little bit of decision making, just going to make that kill as easy as possible for himself as he looks to transition over towards Bridge and potentially get that suppressor fire out towards from Palace. So now it's going to be difficult for Elmets to make their way out. They've got a player in number eight in Rico trying to cause problems. Has he read this perfectly? One big kill. Just going to get himself tucked into the corner, Major, to cause as many problems Ooh. as possible, but drop shots from Euphoria are going to stop that. So Elmets now going to have to play on the front foot well B had that huge two piece in the end of the search and destroy can he manage to produce something here Whoa, just about gets himself away but crybaby he has been battering in terms of kills all series long to be fair to him and he's doing exactly the same once again nine and four now hunting for those double digits but helmets they do have a man on the point and this is the trouble if they can't get shawnee off of this it might start to run away and it will be one pick from Shawnee. They need to try and slow down this progression by at least getting rid of him off the point. But can they manage to do it while Crybaby oh. is just grabbing kills? Wadey's able to take him down. So at least they stop that sixth kill. Can't get that important one though, can Shawnee? But Luto's looking here to mop up and he can't do it to the full effect. So first tick done, two still remaining. Yeah, I don't think 109 is enough, really, to make this a TDM. 14 kills are definitely possible, but they're going to need a quick four-man drop to get that to 10 kills. Otherwise, it is going to be a little bit too slow. They're going to probably have two, maybe three pushes, particularly if they go and get these kills next. But this could be an easy wipe, especially if Mistaken do get these next set of kills. This could be a problem for the team in purple. Right now, though, they have got themselves... The four ticks, which is something the boys are mistaken, weren't able to do in the previous round. So still in the driving seat, Major, even if they do lose this round. So 35 seconds and 11 plays 13 means that it's all to play for here. Rico again, he's been going around the back of their spawns time after time. But Beat knows his whereabouts. And now the shots are going to have to be crisp. Whoa, just about gets away from it. But now Euphoria gets a really big two-piece in towards middle map. But now here goes Rico around the back. But the reads again from Beat are oh, bang on once more. And the last remaining players looking to try and touch will be Shawnee and Luto. Shawnee gets one with five seconds. I don't think he's even going to get close to this. Wade, he cuts him down. The red arrows will combine for three. And that will be a very strong defensive hold. And the problem with that at the end is that Elmwood's try and push for that like final impossible um you know push towards the a zone and all they end up doing is feeding euphoria kills so they're potentially now in the problem of having the opposition you know one off a cruise so crazy plays really i think you just need an in-game leader to say just sit back don't feed them kills we've we've cocked this one up and let's get into the next round so yeah just keep your eyes peeled can the boy in euphoria get that cruise that could make this game completely different right now it's one all but elmwood's slightly in the driving seat with in terms of tick count but is it going to count for anything if mistaken can get a little oh. bit more control in this game and euphoria puts that straight in the back pocket in style Spot Shawnee as well. Seven in a row now for Euphoria. Looks to try and just run straight down the middle of the map. But what he's done is allow his team progress on the point. First tick's done. But now B has to try and juggle his life a little bit here. There are a lot of players near him. And now they are looking to try and get him out of this position. And they do exactly that. Three fall down. Wade is going to be that last man over towards mid tank. Rico though isn't going to be able to uh, snuff him out of it as they look to try and progress their way up the map. So, granted themselves a bit of breathing space over towards that B point, Pabs, and the first ticket A is done, so I suppose you take that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. This is what they needed. They needed a, a, a solid round where they get some time <laughs> and some zones. Crybaby with a nice two-piece shooting out into dark as well, and normally I get absolutely minced in that point, but we said he is a shooter, so do expect him to be able to do that. He's going to get another big pick, but he can't get the kill. Loads of shots go down as he sees players bump hole, go around the back. He finally gets dealt with, and it's going to be Beat who puts him into that. They weren't able to do B, so again, a big opportunity, and with 56 seconds on the clock, we're going to see them potentially get put on the back foot as the suppressor fire comes down this B street. Well, Shawnee is on the power position here. 
Got to be careful not to wide pick it, though. He is incredibly weak as well, but Beat and Astro are just waiting over towards Broken. But they're going to wait for some reinforcements first. So who's going to be the first man with the uh, the very short straw to run straight into the sights of Shawnee? But now here goes Beat. Doesn't check that corner, though. The Renetti isn't going to be good enough to take down that man. And it will be Rico and Crybaby combining for a few. And Crybaby oh, finally goes down. So it will still be Euphoria lurking near it. 18 seconds left on the clock. And potentially a bit of a dream to go with it as well as they uh, are going to try and bump heads again on towards that B point. But now keeping on Rico, he's going to look to try and cut off a few players here. Potentially three DVDs. Renetti out. Oh, but it's windy. Euphoria hits the deck and the shots hit Rico's face as Luto tries to get involved as well. Crybaby has been trying to flank this position over towards Dark multiple times. Is he going to check this left-hand side? He's going to fly straight over the top of him. He's beat and manages to get the kill. So B point done. One minute left on the clock. 13 plays 10. Yeah, this might come down to lives now. Ten minutes, ten. Sorry, one minute is. I, I can barely breathe. One minute is well enough time to get ten kills. So this could come down to TDM right now. Helmets need to go big. Though was mistaken. Look to put them on a struggle bus. Big plays from Euphoria in DVDs. He knew his players had plenty of time to get onto the hill and just waited inside to get those picks. And that's going to give his team that little bit of extra time. But this time is going to fly away from them. Twenty eight seconds as the uh, the heart starts pumping and the hands get sweaty. As they try and make their way over towards the A-zone and those purple arrows just fending them off right now. Yeah, and B currently at 10 and 15. So, guys, look at the uh, kills in the bottom right, not the ones on the scores, because uh, Codcaster, woohoo! Um, yeah. B now looking to try. He gets a bit of info, though. He stuns onto Rico. Doesn't spot him, though. But now with five seconds remaining, they've got to go. B able to get on one, turns onto him. But now can they get on the point? 1.3 seconds remaining. They've got the man on the point. No, they haven't. He goes down. And it will be a purple dub in that round. Elmis take the round. Yeah, as we go back and forth, almost similar to S and D, no one able to break that uh, a, a defensive kind of stranglehold right now. So the attack and stranglehold. So big, big plays coming out of the boys in helmets and 22 and 13. We said Crybaby was a shooter, but he is absolutely dominating this game so far, and it is going to be advantage to the boys of helmets. But the question is, Major, can they get this attacking round done? They did so well in that very first round, yeah. but they haven't been able to replicate it since. And this is going to come down to, uh, to whether their shooters are able to get control, map control. Are the comms going to be there as well? Mistaken. Going to just through that split push. They potentially look to try and get control over towards middle map. We're going to see some... Big shots go out, Ooh. and it's going to be a purple kill feed, Major. Yeah, well, what are they going to do with it? They're going to head straight over towards A. Look at those purple arrows onto A. They have no idea mistaken. And now these ticks might be done before they even get a chance to get in towards the hill. First tick's done. Second tick pending. Trophies are in. Red arrows have got to go, and they've got to go quick. Beat gets caught in the crossfire, so surely he's going to get cut down before he even gets to contest. He flies on, but the stun slaps him straight in the face, and that will be a very, very strong take of that A point. And now, question is, Pabs, is the damage done? Yeah, I think this is going to be really tricky for Mistaken, Ooh. especially with Rico shooting like that. He must have been on absolutely no damage. So he total damage there in terms of his HP, but able to come good with the kill. Right now he's 17 and 15. We did say he's a slow starter, but once he starts shooting, the kid cannot be stopped. Euphoria back on a five street. Is he going to get that another cruise in the back pocket? The question is, Major, has he even used the previous one that he had? So this is starting to stack, stack them, and it's been big plays. No one been able to deal with Rico so far, but it is going to be Wady Major out towards this JCB just yeah. looking to try cause problems and helmets look they under the cosh right now. Yeah, so they've got to try and get rid of Wade here because this is going to be so, so difficult to transition if they can't do it. Rico gets some bullets in, but surely somebody has to sacrifice to try and fly at him. No, they won't do it. So potentially a little bit of patience it's just going to mean that this round has just got that little bit harder. They're going to try and reposition for the time being. Beat is actually just going to completely 180 and go over towards this ice cream side. He gave up a lot of mid-map control there for a second. I thought he was going to try and stay there to try stop any sort of transition from Elmitz because that's now what they're exactly going to do. They're going to now try and push straight through mid. Information, though, for Beat is looking good. Can the shots collide? He's diving. <laughs> dodge, dive, dodge, dive, duck, dodge, dive. And he's unfortunately going to drop eventually. But you do fear, Pabs, if mistaken, do drop one wave of kills here that the boys from Elmis are just going to get straight on that point. But they're holding strong. 
Yeah, it's been big plays by Wade. He just hasn't been bushed yeah. out of this this area at all. Finally, Finally. I think he's going to get dealt with. And this could be a problem for them as we see two players just start to make their way forward. But they need to maintain control, and that is not good. Euphoria has just had two really big kills. He caught a player in number five in Crybaby on the flank, and he's just dropped that player in construction. So if mistaken are going to take this round, it's largely on the back of Euphoria's stellar plays in those two positions. And that's beat with some easy kills. and made I think that's going Ooh. to be everything as we see the, the <clears throat> kill feed go more than just red. It's go super red as Beat gets T, T killed. Well, three seconds, Crybaby straight through the middle. Ooh. Oh, if he didn't shoot, he would have got the point, but mistaken. Ah. They will take that round and we will get that round five. So again, boy, who's going to be on the defensive side, Pabs? Because, I mean, we've had a good couple of opportunities in there, especially Elmitz. They took that A point so, so quickly. It was looking brilliant, but they just couldn't break through a B. Yeah, I mean, it was so... It, the A point one... I mean, it's the same problem, isn't it? You get one zone and the other team can tear it up and get set up. It doesn't matter which one you take. It becomes then a war of attrition. In many ways, you know, I think it's probably... It's it's easier to attack the A point than it is potentially to defend the B point, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, it, it's... Or the other way around, apologies. But, yeah, Elmet's just, you know, on the back foot again, just not able to, to solve that puzzle that's been mistaken so far. But, again, Euphoria's dragged this mistaken seam right the way through and it's going to be Astro just looking over DVDs nice reaction kill though not able to get the second kill Renetti oh. out as they do get that first tick major and approaching the second tick already I don't know whose corpse that was but I, I swear I heard the thud of it hitting the floor by Broken it looks as though he's uh, it's going to be a lot of purple corpses over towards that B and point and look at B he's already on this point as well so now can B manage to cause the upset and maybe stay alive for long enough here. That's the question. There's going to be a lot of players hunting for him. Shawnee's going to be one of which Luto going to be another. Flies onto the point. But Shawnee, big kill. They needed that one. If they didn't manage to take beat down, that was looking like it was going to be a little bit of a worrying situation for them. But they do manage to at least temporarily silence the man that they have struggled to do all map long. Euphoria goes into the blender. And now it's just a case of getting set up. Yeah, this has been very much Euphoria versus Crybaby. Crybaby stats are spot on, 30 and 21, but look at Euphoria, 30. Four and 23 the cruise uh -oh. is going to come out and this is where elements need to worry they're going to have to tear it up or force themselves to get picked not a kill at all but weighty is going to be right up luto is going to be the one on defense trying to get the pick he's Ooh. going to get dealt with almost immediately oh. surely tries to back things up but weighty now the lone soldier uh -oh. on the hill as they look to try and get suppressive fire down that a street well, they got to try and play the pinch. That's a big kill from Crybaby. He knows Astro's out the back as well. Can he get the second? No, he can't. Astro's so one shot. But the first ticket A is done. Wadey's still alive, but they do just about manage to sniff him out. But now, can Beat make the play? No, he cannot. So a little bit of squeaky bum time there for El Miss. It looked as though they were going to give it away in the uh, nick of time. They managed to just about get those players off the point. So one minute, 25 seconds left on the clock. Where is this push? going to form from it's a big split across the middle of the map you've got wady out the back as well who's going to look to try and disrupt potentially a few spawns but rico might be a little bit wiser to it and he is spots wady there's one for him chow's on to beat as well oh and the uh the nade just coming off of a little bit of rebar there isn't uh, going to connect but now what do mistaken try and do just playing it slow pabs but they've not got a huge amount of time to play with now one minute on the clock yeah, and this is probably not going to be again another TDM moment. 17, last play 17. They are going to need to get a wave of kills, get some control of A, and get themselves on. That's going to be a nice start as Beat and Ooh, Euphoria and Wadey put three in. Oh, is that going to be down. four? Oh, that is everyone down. This is going to be a nice bit of control for the boys of Mistake. And Elmer's stack. going to need to rush this. Got to get the first mix. The shots are so wild from Crybaby. So gonna get on. He's oh. trying to get onto the hill. It's Mistake and who get the time. They get the kill. They get the win. A 3-0, a closer one you will not see. I was going to say, literally, that is not worthy of a 3-0 in that one. Somehow mistaken that's control that is bread and butter control one wave of kills on the point and unfortunately on invasion it is brutal if you're trying to just funnel in through the front there the uh, the stats do unfortunately lie to us we'll have to wait and see what the other final stats are in the after action report yeah. but mistaken take the three O pabs they will uh secure a dub in group c and i will just double check to make sure that will put them yeah so that will put them third place and we'll finish fourth in the group but again both teams will go through in towards that uh, that losers bracket of the katana gaming league but 
I mean, yeah, three O Pabs wasn't really a three O, was it? It was uh, one where it could have easily been an Elmitz three O. It's so close in both games. Again, you always felt mistaken, just had a bit of an edge, but especially in that control that just showed you how close it was. And again, I just felt like Elmets could at some point, especially if they could get another player who was shooting as crisp as that crybaby was, that probably would be a different game. But at times, mistaken had different players taking over the map. So you're yeah. four, you're very much in that control, just played so, so well. And again, you just got to look at how close the S&D was, comes down to a 1v2 and, you know, just a time and was there for mistaken and that sub base could easily have gone the way of helmets they just lost their rhythm towards the end and we saw this kind of gnarly scrap at 2-3-0 uh, in p2 on that third hard point that really set the tone for the, the rest of the series yeah so uh it will be a dub nonetheless for mistaken it will be their first in the group but they uh, will progress with a little bit of momentum there say a group of players perhaps we've not seen before so so to take those maps off of the Elmitz lads, we know on paper that team, even if they're not necessarily a, a core four, you've still got to play pretty damn well. And uh, some good individual performances will result in them taking that in 3-0. So that is going to be it from myself and Pablo this evening. GG's to uh, all the uh, guys that took place and uh, put some beautiful Call of Duty on our screens. But yeah, it will be progressing in towards the bracket play. We do have the dates. I can't remember when they are. But uh, yeah, me and Pabs will be casting over some of those bracket play games as and when we can. So yeah, GG's to everyone who took part. Thank you very much for joining me on the cast again, brother. It was good to see you again. Yeah, it was nice to be back past them together again in the uh, in the bedroom scenario. Sorry. <laughs> so weird but um yeah it, it, it's it's good we need more of this i think we need to try and get a, a few more games under our belt but yeah it's nice it's been a weird season this season so yeah we can't wait yeah so uh, thank you very much to everyone who has tuned in a big shout out to harry i don't know if you're still here harry for uh, dropping 25 gifted subs absolute madness from from him and thank you very much to uh, to all the new followers crelly will wes uh is it fijo thank you very much demon beats uh, june and uh, pyro as well thank you very much for all the new followers guys but that is it from myself and pablo uh, we might be back this weekend with some more quality reaction we'll have to wait and see but for this evening that will be all from us and i uh, hope you have a great evening and we will see you guys very very shortly